The Rowers provided the light blue victory in Ely almost six weeks ago and will be hoping for the same outcome this afternoon in the first of three varsity cricket matches this summer. And welcome to Fenners. Uh, thank you so much for joining us as we bring you ball-by-ball -ball commentary of the men's T20 varsity match between Cambridge University and Oxford University. Alongside me, Cambridge 105 radio's Chris Jordan and current light blue Nathan Jones, who played in the reserve game of this morning. Nathan Johns, I'm confused over the song there. Uh, Nathan Johns, who played in the reserve game this morning. Uh, gentlemen, thanks very much uh, for joining me. Um, Nathan, you've been keeping an eye on the women's game, uh, which is in its closing stages now. Uh, how's it going? Yeah, it's an interesting one. It's uh, delicately poised at the minute. Um, the key wicket, the light blues are batting at the minute, and the key wicket is definitely Emma Jones. She's currently 42, not out of 29 balls. She's been the foreign player for Cambridge so far this summer, and uh, her wicket is a big one, as uh, we need another about 70 or so off, off nine overs to chase down Oxford's 140. So. Uh, I think our, our, our hopes are pinned a lot on how she goes, and if she bats through, I think we've got a, we've got a really good chance of chasing this down. OK, we'll keep an eye on that over the next uh, little while. Now, the weather, it's... Well, I can't really see the sun anywhere. It's uh, sort of bright, but most of the skies above us seem to be covered in cloud at the moment. Does that mean it's doing anything out there on the pitch? Not so much with the pink ball, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, they might do a little bit in the first over or two, um, but after that, they go pretty soft and... Uh, they won't do a lot. The, the pitch, to be honest with you, is actually spinning a little bit, um, which is interesting. Uh, it, it normally does a little bit at Fenners um, for the spinners, but it's doing a little bit more than usual, which uh, the first game this morning was very it was very low scoring as a result. There's a, there were plenty of spinners on board. I need to ask about that pink ball, because ordinarily that's what we tend to use. I say we. That's what normally tends to be used when it's a day-night test match. And I think it's the first time I, I've encountered it in, in a T20. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting. Pretty much all of our limited overs stuff, even 50 overs, has been pink ball this year. We've been uh, in the Bucks League, the Uni League, um, playing against some good sides and all those 50 over games have been pink ball. Um, I'm not quite sure the reasoning behind it, but it's just what we've been what we've been used to. So I assume that's why we're playing with it now for the 2020. OK, and um, playing this morning, you know, what's it like? What's it like you know, playing at Fenners? Fenner, well, Fenner's is a beautiful cricket ground, um, as anyone who's been here knows full well. Uh, there's a lot of history behind it, and especially in a big game when you're playing against the other place, um, the Dark Blues, you, it, it does. It just there's something different about it. It's it's hard to put your finger on it. Um, a bit sad because normally for a big T20 day like this, we would have we would have tried to organise it so we get a good crowd in. Um, obviously, we don't have that today. But even with the other squads around, there's a bit of an atmosphere. That just I was going to say for for a match where there's supposedly no crowd, we've got uh, uh, quite a collection of people over there, and I had trouble finding a place to put my bike earlier. <laughs> yes, well, I think it's because it's there's the three different games on today. There's there's six six sides. Um, so with, the, with all their extended squads, we managed to get a get a decent enough size crowd in with with all those squads. OK, well, we should also mention, uh, for those of you listening on uh, Cambridge 105 Radio, there's also a video feed uh, for this match uh, this afternoon. If you go to our website at cambridge105.co.uk, uh, you can see a link top right-hand corner. Uh, you can click that and uh, watch the match and, and us a lot as well uh, in vision uh, right through to around about 7 o'clock uh, this evening. I think the, the, the women's game is a little bit behind, isn't it, in terms of where we expect it to be at this point? Yeah, I think so. I think to be fair, that's probably our fault. The seconds this morning, we had a few, uh, quite quite bizarrely, two guys got hit in the head in our game, so we had a few we had a few delays. So uh, we we were probably we were probably about five or ten minutes late. So I think that probably has a bit of a knock on effect. Are they okay? I, I trust. Well, there was one that's actually there was they thankfully I, I'm about to say both incidents were quite funny. They're only funny because both players are okay. Uh, the first one was our oh, the Cambridge fast bowler Jamie Gamel. Um, the keeper threw the ball back to him as he was walking back to his mark and he didn't see it and he clocked one on the eyebrow and had a bit of a cut so there's a delay while he got patched up um the video is doing the rounds online if people want to see on our on our instagram the cambridge cricket instagram it's it's quite entertaining well excellent worth, well, well, well worth a watch <laughs> but of course only well worth a watch because he's okay um he was fine he continued and he finished his spell and also the the oxford skipper james pyman got when he was batting got hit by a throw um so he had to change his helmet 
um, but he was absolutely fine. Uh, there was no blood on that occasion. Um, but yeah, so because of that, we're running a little bit a little bit late. But thankfully, both players are okay. Okay, well that's good to hear. Chris, I haven't seen you in goodness knows how long. How are you? How the devil are you, Julian? I'm very well. well. Thank you very much. I'm very well, yeah. And it's uh, it's the first time I've actually been on uh, on Cambridge 105 for a few months. I uh, uh, kind of uh, got through the first uh, got through the first wave, and then uh, uh, I thought I'd take a bit of time off over the winter. So yeah, it's great to be back, and uh, thanks a lot for for asking me along. It's uh, it's actually a much nicer day than I was uh, fearing at this time yesterday. And I was looking out my window to uh, uh, to just uh, driving rain, but um, uh, really great that the uh, that both the games so far have been underway pretty much on time. Uh, that's really uh, much better than what I was expecting. No, absolutely. What was the last live cricket that you went to see? <laughs> uh, it would have been here, right? Um, but it was a good a, f- a good few years ago. I think it would have been uh, one of the county warm up games. Uh, I think it was probably Middlesex here. Um, uh, oh no, maybe it was uh, maybe it was the Essex game actually, uh, but yeah, I, I, I think I tried to get along every year uh, um, since I've lived in Cambridge, but the last few years uh, for no good reasons at all, I've just not quite quite made it. But I don't think people realise that uh, uh, certainly this uh, in kind of April time, if there's if you get a decent April weather, uh, then getting down to Fenners on a uh, on a on a weekday and watching uh, one of the county warm up games, you see some you know, top quality and and sometimes international cricketers playing here, and it's uh, well worth it. Yeah, I think Kevin Peterson was here, wasn't he, during the height of his uh, saw, his career playing in, in one match? I saw Kevin Peterson hit a six over the pavilion. It felt like it must have landed in Mill Road. It was amazing. <laughs> and uh, a couple of great, like, perfect crashing straight drives that uh, it was beautiful to watch. But uh, they they got him out for, he was playing for Surrey. They got him out for about 30-odd, and then uh, Cambridge went on to win the game that year. It was a, a brilliant four-day performance. Oh, that's what we like to hear. So, our uh, live coverage of uh, Cambridge University uh, versus Oxford University in this Varsity T20 gets underway probably a little while after four o'clock. But what we're going to do now is to hear from the Cambridge men's captain, uh, Nick Taylor. Um, he's had a frustrating 12 months off the field, uh, but a largely positive one on it. We've had a lot of games in quite a small amount of time. And they've all been pretty challenging. We've had a pretty tough, it's probably our toughest fixture programme in recent past. And we've sort of, we've won some, we've lost some. I think we're probably just under 50% winning, but I would have probably taken that at the start of the year, given the teams that we've been playing. So we've been playing in the in the Bucks National League, so some of the best uni sides in the country. Uh, and we played some pretty strong Premier League club outfits at the start of the year as well. What's the, the past year been like for you? Just explain what the past year's been like, because as everyone knows, we've had COVID to deal with. You've had COVID to deal with as a, a new captain coming in last season. I guess for you, it's, you probably know no different, but I imagine lots of challenges, probably dealing with more of the logistical side of things off the field. Yeah, I mean, there's a huge amount of admin that comes with trying to coordinate training stuff and risk assessments and all of this. This year, we've been lucky. We've had Sanchit Gandhi's come in as the club junior president. So he's a, another student that's helped on the admin side. And the University Cricket Club have this sort of extensive senior committee that help with that as well. But it's been it's been frustrating, certainly last year. So I would have been captaining last year, but we had about three or four games in the end, rather than a full season of a winter programme and then loads of games packed in that obviously were all cancelled. And then again, sort of coming into this winter, thinking, brilliant, we'll get training up and running, it'll all be, it'll be different. And then this massive wave of COVID through the winter preventing that. So it was a bit strange coming into the summer with a group of guys that didn't really know each other that well with this sort of lot of new guys coming into the team and guys graduating last summer. So that's been a challenge, but actually we've had so much cricket that everyone's kind of grouped together pretty well and everyone gets on well, which definitely helps. And it's been nice as things are opening up to go from groups of six sort of freezing in Parker's Peace, trying to get to know each other to actually being able to go to a pub or socialise in a slightly more fun way, I guess. Freezing in Parker's Peace, are those your social events then? Because <laughs> it must have been so difficult to build that camaraderie, that team spirit. When you can't socialise, you can't go out to the pub over the past few months. Yeah, it's it's been a tricky one. It was, yeah, after the first, before pubs were open, that was our only option, really. So you'd finish the game and then you'd have a quick beer and then it'd be so, like, start of April, was so cold. I think our first game was 3rd of April or something. something. It was really early on and just freezing so understandable people don't want to hang around for too long but it's nice now that things are picked up that guys have had an opportunity to get to know each other a bit better 
sort of welcome some of the new guys into the squad and a lot of those guys have done very well in cricketing terms so that's that's also helped have you been able to train indoors over winter or has that been not allowed we had a couple of weeks where as a member of the sort of national league the ecb granted that cricket elite status as a development pathway so that meant we had a couple of weeks where with sort of very strict um, restrictions we could get a little bit of training inside so that was nice before 29th of March when we were allowed to come outside but yeah very 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 limited in terms of what we'd normally try and do. Let's talk about last year's fixtures then and uh, let's start with the 50 ever match which took place on the 1st of September. Uh, Oxford won it by 78 runs the the story really was is that you didn't get enough runs on the board. Yeah I mean that that one was an interesting one we basically came in similar situation with a lot of those guys were playing their first game for university as a varsity game and that's unheard of and so we didn't quite get things moving as a unit in the field I think they set about 250 260 in the game their best two batters managed to get scores and that put us in a difficult position so they probably got 20 or 30 of our par on that deck and then their opening bowlers bowled a good spell and we ended up I think three down in that first 10 their captain is now playing for for not actually he's got a contract just after that game and clearly a good bowler so things kind of came off for them we didn't quite click that day and ended up losing pretty heavily probably you know in fairness just outplayed on the day so yeah they, they had a, a pretty good run that day a lot of things went right for them a few things went wrong for us so it was nice to then come back in the four-day game that was about two days later with that game started so it was really good to then bounce back and show what we were made of as a cricket side and actually ended up clicking together as a fielding unit a lot better working out plans a little bit better and guys scoring more runs. Yeah, the four-day game, you really did bounce back, winning by 249 runs. You were strung up top with the, the bat and then bowled them out under 200 in, in both innings. That must have been an amazing feeling, Nick, really. You talk about the varsity and the, the history of it. To, to represent Cambridge and, and win the varsity four-day fixture, that must be right up there with your, your best cricketing days so far to date. Yeah, I mean, that was massive. It was... It was so good, especially off the back of losing pretty heavily at their place to then play at Venice and actually very convincingly win that game. Yeah, awesome effort. A couple of individual bits of brilliance from uh, James Vitali got 10 wickets in the game. We had Peter Daniel, who was there for a one-year Masters, scoring 125, I think, in the second innings. And that just massively set us up for a big win. And yeah, these are, these are our, our biggest games. It was the last first-class game as I understand it, that the university will likely play. Fingers crossed it comes back, but I guess we'll have to see. So, yeah, that that was a huge game for us, and that's, I think it's the first four-day win in a couple of years. I think Cambridge won at Fenners in 2017, but hadn't since then, so it was good to get the win in 2020. I was looking online and saw that, I believe, you went to to school in Oxford. Is that right? Were you you brought up in Oxford, or was it just a attended school there? So I actually went to school at the Perth in Cambridge, but my undergraduate degree was in Oxford. So I did four years studying there and then I had switched across here. So I'm now doing a postgrad degree at Cambridge. So yeah, I've, I've also played on the other side of that fixture. So it's kind of interesting seeing both sides of it, I guess, and, and seeing how Oxford approached the games and how we've approached the games over the last few years. But presumably, therefore, you have a real understanding of the weight and the history of the, the fixture. Yeah, definitely. I think it's it's hard to to not engage with that aspect of it. You've got a fixture that's coming up to 200 years old, and the university club it was going to have its it was its 200th anniversary last year, which is it was a shame it was the COVID year because we would have been doing more stuff to mark that occasion. But yeah, this massive sporting history. I think cricket is if you talk about a Cambridge blue cricket is the original blue sport. There's a huge amount of history there in terms of university sport. So, yeah, it's a, it's a nice thing to be involved with, for sure. And it's it's nice to engage with that historical aspect. And Fairness in the Parks is very historical, first-class cricket grounds. Yeah, absolutely. And you'll be playing at one of those grounds this Friday. Fenners in the T20. Now, I spoke to you before, Nick, and you've said the four-day game is the one you want to win. Winning at Lords is also pretty special. How high on the priority list is the T20 fixture between the two sides? I think, I mean, T20, it it has to be your day, I guess. You know, it's one of those games where anything can go right or wrong on the day. But that will be really important for us to try and sort of 
start off that varsity campaign with a bit of momentum, try and put all the things that we've been working on the last month or two into practice in a pressure situation and hopefully take that, you know, get a big win on Friday and take that into the Lords game, which is uh, a week on Sunday. So pretty quick turnaround between those two. Mm. So I guess more than anything, as much as obviously you want to win every game you play in, it's a real potential to put a statement in ahead of a, a couple more varsity fixtures this season. <laughs> Yeah, massively. It's our it's our first look at their side as well. So this is the thing with uni cricket where you've got quite a high turnover of players, of guys graduating and coming in. So it's always good to get a look at these are the guys that we'll be playing in those other fixtures. And as I say, the four-day game is really important to us. But if we can make a good start in this T20 and also get a good look at the side that we're going to be playing against, then you can start to make plans about how can we try and compete against those players and can we make plans against certain bowlers, certain batters, work out how we're going to score in the 50-over game and how we're going to take wickets in the four-day game, that sort of thing. Nick, all the best for Friday. Brilliant. Thanks, Ollie. Cambridge's men's captain Nick Taylor chatting there to Ollie Slack a little earlier on. We're running a little bit behind. Uh, we were expecting coverage of the uh, men's uh, Oxford v Cambridge Varsity T20 match to get underway round about four o'clock, about uh, 15 minutes, I think. Right, Julian, it looks like so we're into the 16th over of the women's T20 here uh, and the men's one will be underway uh, about 10 minutes or so after this match finishes. But it's looking like a fairly exciting finish here. Uh, Cambridge are a little bit behind the rate but they have got a chance. They need about 50 off the last five overs here. Nathan Johns, what are their chances? Again, they've got an outside chance. I think Oxford would have to be favourites at this point, especially because the last few overs they've managed to bowl quite a lot of dot balls, which is exactly what you want at this stage of the innings. Um, Emma Jones for Cambridge is 46 off 36, having hit two fours. Um, again, if she if she can capitalise on this start now and start hitting some boundaries, much needed boundaries. Actually, she skied she's one down towards long on there, but she's safe as it lands, lands short of the ring. Yeah, um, they're turned back and gone for the second and taken it. So... Uh, Emma Jones moves to within two of that her is, half century. I that is her half century. Oh, that I is think. her half century. There yep. we go. There's some the ripple of applause around there. Is that that's her half? She she's barely acknowledged it. I think she appreciates the the greater task lies ahead as she as she tries to steer her side home. She's, she's batting with Gibson, who's 19 of 24 at the minute. I think her job is just to try and rotate the strike and get and get Emma get Emma facing as many of these deliveries as possible in the last four in the last what four and a bit overs now. Yeah, she dug that one out nicely, Emma Jones. Uh, kind of York length delivery pushed it down to long on, but they went back for the second, and I think... That's no, I don't think they made it. That's Gibson I think run Gibson's out. Gibson's gone. Yeah. So uh, three down now for Cambridge. They, uh, and they, they, have to go for, they have to go for everything. Uh, they, they need about 10 and over, 11 and over off these last uh, four and a half overs. Uh, but uh, Emma Jones is still in. While she's still there, there is a, uh, a chance. And... But uh, like as uh, as Julian said, we were expecting the, this game to be over by now, and we would be building up to the men's game. But as it's going on still, and there's a uh, exciting climax, we may as well uh, stick with it. Um, but there, we're just waiting for the new batter to come in. And um, so, just to very uh, briefly look ahead to the uh, to the men's game, Nathan and um, Cambridge University uh, won it. Uh, well, there was no game last year. Cambridge University won it the year before, and it's kind of alternated between the two over the, the past five years or so, hasn't it? Um, what's what's the feeling for for the match today? Do you feel there's a strong favourite, or is it kind of 50-50? Yeah, I think I think I wouldn't necessarily say strong favourite, but I think if you had to uh, attach the favourite favourite tag to anyone, I think it would be Cambridge, the host today. I think they've been playing in quite a high standard league this year of university cricket, um, alongside Durham, Leeds, and, and Loughborough, who are three of the probably the three best sides in the country and, and we've done reasonably well we've been competitive we uh, arguably should have beat Leeds twice and uh, and we did actually beat Durham at home and all of those sides have got quite a lot of contracted county players as uh, as Emma Jones swats a uh, half tracker down to long on for a boundary there much needed boundary there for Cambridge yeah, um, four runs right to uh, just outside uh, our commentary point here on the boundary uh, at Fenners but but yes I think having listened anecdotally to and read a few Oxford scorecards I know they they played a game against the Oxford um, MCC or UCC I think it's now called which is I think will essentially be Oxford Brooks University by and large and they got bowled out in a 2020 recently and they got bowled out for quite a low total I also know that Oxford have, have been ravaged with injuries quite badly their, their normal skipper Chris Searle I think in his first net back from lockdown 
um, injured himself and he's and he's still not back. Um, they're also missing uh, one of their left arm spinners. Um, so it, they're, they're they're not at full strength. They haven't necessarily been playing in as, as high high a standard of of a, le- of, a, of a league in the build-up to this. Um, so I think yeah, for those two reasons, you probably would just about have to have to say Cambridge are favourites. Nathan, in terms of the scoring rate uh, for the women, what uh, it is what Cambridge need to get here uh, in, in line with what might be typical in a women's T20 match? I think it's very doable, um, especially with Emma there. She's, she's a quality player and she scored a ridiculous amount of runs for... Um, for the light blues this year so so yeah i think generally the last few overs of a 2020 10 and over is for these days that's that's the norm that's that's what you'd expect um and you know a few years ago maybe we, we would be saying that that's not very doable but as as people have have adapted to the format more i think 10 and over for the last few overs is uh is is definitely the key and i think what helps there is that emma took a single off the last ball of the over there so she's she's maintained the strike as uh, as we go on to the next over I noticed as well, actually, that they're wearing white pads against the uh, the well, the, the dark blue trousers, the uh, the light blue sh- shirts that they're wearing. Um, are they with the same white pads they'd play in the lo- wear in the longer form of the game? <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a question of equipment, and I think the the second team this morning, the men's second team, um, we were kind of the same. We were kind of actually a mix and match. Half of us managed to source some black pads to match our our black trousers, and half of us didn't. And uh, obviously, obviously, the women um, haven't managed to source that. I think. <laughs> Look, You're very into the sartorial choices being made here today, aren't you? Julian? It's very, yeah. very important. <laughs> very important I, I, part of it all. I think it is, and I think it's a question of you know the men's blues will all be having their coloured pads. So I think you know w- whether whether they could have been lent for this game, I'm not sure. But uh, I don't know. May, may, maybe it was a sizing issue. I'm, I'm not quite sure. I haven't wasn't wasn't involved in the in, in the in the equipment side of things this today. Emma Jones just uh, carved one through the covers there. It was uh, uh, initially fumbled but stopped just short of the boundary. But I think that's uh, a couple more runs to Cambridge. Um, so, uh, yeah, we, like, we're, we're slightly unfortunate with our commentary position that we can't quite see the scorecard. So uh, uh, we, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, get a, we'll get an update at the end of the over of what the situation is with three overs to go. But we've still got four, four balls left, oh no, five balls left, in fact, of this over. Uh, and... Uh, this time it's uh, played played a miss no run there. It's it's Holly, Holly Tasker has joined um, um at the crease and uh, I think her job here is just to is to do her absolute very best to get to get Emma on strike here. Um, it's very difficult. It, it is a good pitch, but especially now that there has been a game on it earlier on, it it wears out faster and faster as the day goes on. So it's very difficult to start on this pitch, let alone start and look to score ten and over. So I think. As the as the new batter, your job here is to is to get off strike. Is that going to cause some problems for the men when they they get underway at sort of quarter past four or thereabouts? Potentially, I think batting last on this track is going to be difficult, especially as we saw this morning with the second team that was spinning. So it should spin even more by the end of the day. So batting last will be difficult, and then of course you add the add the pressure of a chase, scoreboard pressure, runs on the board, etc. Um, to that, so I think I think yes is I think it would definitely well. Oh, Holly Tasker has just been bowled there. Yep. So uh, clean bowled after a couple of dot balls. The pressure clearly telling as they uh, they know the run rate is getting a little bit uh, out of control. I guess the uh, potential uh, gloom of uh, uh, what the lights likely to be like around 7 p.m. might be a factor as well, Nathan. Later on, who, whoever's batting second. Potentially, yes. I mean. I tend to find playing at this ground, um, we're surrounded by the red brick buildings of, of Hughes Hall College. Um, when you're playing with a red ball, it's particularly later on in the evening, it can actually be quite difficult in the field to pick it up. But I imagine with the pink ball, which is much brighter, that probably won't be too much of an issue. I noticed over the uh, the far side, so to our left, there appears to be a few sort of uh, uh, practice throwdowns uh, going on. Is that uh, is is that the men's team or the uh, the Oxford men's team, perhaps? Yeah. So you're looking at the Oxford men's team. They're doing some fielding drills and the warm up. The uh, the Cambridge men's team blues are actually in our right uh, to our right hand side in the indoor school. They're um, they're obviously having some throwdowns or some bowl throughs in there. Um, normally, in a game like this, you'd have access to the square where you'd be able to do some bowl throughs or you'd have some outdoor nets to uh, to be able to have a bat. But obviously with, with the structure of this day as it is with three games on, um, you, you don't have access to that because of time. So uh, the, the Oxford boys are over there doing some fielding outside in the limited space they have and the Cambridge boys are inside having a hit. So 
Uh, Oxford scored 146 for four in this women's game. Uh, we're watching the uh, Cambridge women's team try to chase that down. Um, Nathan, have you got a, an up-to-date score after that wicket of Holly Tasker? Uh, we're, uh, we're uh, well, I'm, I like, like, like we said, we can't really see the scoreboard, so the, uh, we're, we're relying a little bit on the um, the online scorecard, which is about an over behind. As uh, we see, a, we see a That's fantastic a great shot. shot. Yeah. From uh, I don't know if it's quite going to make the boundary. It went over there down to long off. And uh, no, it's two runs I to... I tell you what, that's an excellent result because that was the last ball of the over as well. So yeah. not only was it not a dot ball, which is kind of what's killing Cambridge at the moment is the amount of dot balls, but because it was two, it means that uh, that Emma will be on strike um, for, the, for the next over. For the start of the 18th over, yeah. So three overs to go. Uh, by my calculations, Cambridge need around just over 40 from those three overs. So 14 and over, this is not 100% accurate. Yeah, I've got an up-to-date scorecard now. It's Chowdhury who's joined Emma out there and she's now two off two balls. So she's striking a runner ball after that shot down the ground. And uh, Cambridge are 108 for four off 17 overs. So 108 for four, so that means they do 39 off three. So 13 and over. So slightly better position than I, than I had us down for, which is great. Quite uh, so that's that's it's an outside chance. Outside chance. I was about to say um, the field was interesting because there was no deep mid wicket to Emma, um, but now as soon as I say that deep mid wicket has dropped, I reckon that would have been her go-to boundary option. But that so fielder has now dropped. Short back. Emma tries to uh, heave it down the ground to uh, long on that it's fielded, and that's just the single. Excellent piece of fielding that to keep that down to one. That's exactly what Oxford would have, want, would have wanted there. Yeah, that's right. So uh, 38 off, uh, where are we, 17 balls. And yeah, let's hope for a, a similarly close finish in the men's game later on this evening. But uh, as we are, Chowdhury on strike, it's a full toss and she's tried to... Uh, it's a no ball, I believe. I think... Yeah, no ball yeah. given. Yeah. So there we go. So it was a full toss, uh, but o over waist height. She tried to uh, hoik it into the leg side, and uh, it was caught. But uh, uh, she's safe. It's a single. Is it a free hit? Yeah, free hit it for is. this as well. So uh, um, actually, a perfect result for Cambridge there because the single has put Emma Jones on strike for this free hit. Big delivery. This Emma on strike with the free hit. It's a. Uh, Oh, oh, she's tried to uh, paddle it uh, over the wicketkeeper and uh, down to fine leg, but uh, didn't get hold of it, so no run off the free hit. I can see why she's trying to do that. Fine leg is very fine, so she's tried to walk across her stumps and hit it backward of square leg into a big gap there between deep square yeah. and fine leg, but sadly it's probably just not enough pace on the ball on that delivery for that shot. So uh, in again, uh, four balls left me over. Uh, Jones uh, smashes this into the leg side, uh, but it's cleanly fielded. They're going back for the second, uh, the throw to the bowler's end, but it's safe. So Chowdhury gets back for the second, and uh, that's two more runs to Emma Jones, who must be on around 60, not out now, opening the batting for Cambridge and still there with uh, just two and a half overs to go. Yeah, normally, You'd be quite frustrated at that, at the fielder allowing a second run. But at this stage of the game, when Cambridge need boundaries, I'm sure Oxford won't mind. So in bowls and Jones again tries to uh, tries to drive that. It's driven down the ground and fielded at uh, mid off and just a single this time for Emma. I think that's where she needs to go. Mid off is is everyone is back on the leg side, so it, you're not going to have a lot of joy clearing the front leg and trying to swing through mid wicket unless you completely get hold of it. I think with, with mid off up there, she's better off trying to make some room and hit and hit over the offside. As the next delivery comes in, Chowdhury tries to drive through the covers. It doesn't beat the covers, but good running actually from uh, from Emma Jones to uh, to snatch that single. And uh, are we at the end of the over? We're not. No, I think We're the, umpi the umpire. One more to go because of that no ball. The umpire is just running in to to fix the stumps there because the keeper took the bails off, but Emma was safely home. Um, yeah, just. <laughs> The singles at this stage, even even just getting Emma on strike to as as the set batter to try and hit the boundary probably isn't going to be enough. Now we need a, comp a contribution from from Chowdhury as well. I think she needs to try and get hold of a couple here. You're listening to uh, Cambridge 105 Radio. It's, uh, it's cricket special on Drive Time as uh, bowl. Oh, it's clean bowled uh, and 
Emma Jones has gone for a really good innings, uh, but she was, uh, uh, they were always behind the run rate, so she had to uh, just try and uh, attack every delivery uh, as we got towards the end of this Cambridge innings. And she's gone for a really good uh, innings of, uh, we think, just over 60, but we'll confirm the exact numbers very shortly. Uh, but Cambridge now with two overs to go, uh, and uh, their best player now dismissed are. Uh, in trouble and uh, Oxford will be confident that they can see this off now in the last couple of overs. Yeah, deserved deserved ripple of applause goes around the ground there for Emma as she walks off. It was uh, an excellent knock from her, but uh, unfortunately just 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 come just comes up short in the end. Just double checking her score here. She was bowled by Ross for 63 off 51 balls. Um only three boundaries in that, so that's a it's a lot of running in there. Um, there we saw a couple of uh, seemingly cleanly struck drives that didn't quite reach the boundary is it a slightly slow outfield out there after all the rain over the last couple of days i suspect so yes um although it has been dry all day so it, it will quicken up hopefully um and i would imagine this put it this way this is the quickest the outfield has been all day considering we were playing at 10 a.m this morning when uh, it was <laughs> it was still very damp but uh but yeah no that was a, that was an excellent knock knock from emma and it's un unfortunate that she hasn't been able to stick around and and uh, try and see this one off. So two overs to go. What do Cambridge need now, Nathan? So Cambridge, I as it's I Chowdhury uh, tries to pull that into the leg side, but it was a good delivery, and uh, uh, she's not managed to connect with it. So a dot ball there uh, from the first ball, the nineteenth over. So I have Cambridge on one hundred and fifteen for five with uh, nine balls remaining. Sorry, no, eleven, 11, ball, 11 yeah. balls remaining, if rather. So Cambridge, uh, thirty-two to win from eleven balls. So. It is just drifting away from the Cambridge winners team now, sadly. Um, the uh, bowl into Chowdhury uh, and carved backward of square on the offside, going towards the boundary. I don't think it's quite going to reach, but uh, they are going to... No, they've just taken two. They've not gone back for the third. That, uh, that's a sign of that slow outfield I think you were just mm. talking about there. The amount of times I've seen... I've seen an, an open face shot like that being flayed away through through third man for four, but that that just that just trickled short and held up short, sadly. Yeah, so another 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 couple of months and uh, uh, and a, a hard outfield on the the English summer, and that would have been racing away to the boundary, wouldn't it? But um, uh, yeah, Cambridge now only thirty from ten, so unrealistically you know, five boundaries at least from these last ten balls, and we've had hardly had any so far, and another dot ball there now. Yeah, dot dot ball sadly have just been they've been the the name of the game here for Oxford. They've done very well um, to restrict Cambridge, um, and I think the difference was when Oxford were batting, the the better Cambridge deliveries were still going for ones or twos, um, where at the minute Cambridge are just are, are struggling to pierce gaps at the moment. So thirty from nine as Chowdhury faces uh, right arm over the wicket bowler, uh, and it's uh, I think I think she bowled bowled that, did she? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's Chowdhury oh, gone. Le leg stump. Uh, yeah, leg stump's gone. I can't work out if she played on or just or missed it. But uh, yeah, Chowdhury's gone and Cambridge. Uh, it's it's uh, all over by the shouting now. Thirty from eight balls, um, and Oxford are going to take the the women's varsity match here at Fenners. You can see what she's trying to do there. She's trying to sit on the back foot and carve it through the through the vacant mid wicket region. But sadly, just uh, the ball didn't sit up right for her there as it kept a little bit low. It was quite full for that shot as well, but. At this stage of the game, you can you can certainly see why why that shot was being played, but uh, just failed to make contact as the ball hits into leg stump. No, I think from the kind of fairly muted celebrations, I think the the players know that this is uh, this is over now, isn't? Uh, don't they? Yeah. Uh, it's a confident looking Oxford outfit now as they as they get ready for the next batter to come in. Yeah. And um, yeah, like I say, it's uh, Cambridge One Hundred Five Radio. Uh, just gone four o'clock. Uh, we'll uh, hold the news off until. Uh, the end of this match uh, and then we'll be back with full commentary on the men's varsity t20 uh, nathan johns is alongside me uh who uh did you play in the have you played in the varsity t20 probably you played for the blues but he's not a blues t20 sadly no. uh would have would have you know started the season off in the wider squad this year but sadly as as, as is the way just didn't score enough runs to get in um, so I, I played in a, yeah, like you said, I played in a, in a four day varsity, but not, not, not a T20. 
And who are the uh, the key Cambridge players to watch out for when we get to the men's game later on this afternoon? So it's hard to look past Aaron Amin. Um, he will bat most likely three or four for Cambridge. He's been in excellent form. We had a fixture against Essex Twos uh, about a month or so ago, and he had 140 not out in a good chase. He, he played Middlesex underage um, for quite a while, all the way through the age groups, I think. Um, and by all accounts, from anyone I've met who's encountered him as a youth cricketer, he was always head and shoulders above everybody else. Um, probably the cleanest striker of a cricket ball I've ever played with. He hits at absolutely miles without even trying. Um, <laughs> quite a strong man. Um, obviously has a has quite a good piece of willow in his hand as well. And um, he also bowls more than, more than helpful off spin, so he'll be one of two Cambridge spinners today. So I think all round... Um, his his destruct his destructive capabilities with the bat will be crucial in this format, and also he'll bowl some hopefully a few four hours of tidy off spin. Lovely stuff. We we've not been uh, not been quite covering ball by ball because uh, uh, there's just been another couple of dot balls. Uh, we're now into the last over, and I think Cambridge still uh, I think at a uh, hundred and uh, hundred and sixteen hundred and seventeen for for five for six. Um, one hundred and seventeen for six. Now that's the last over started. So the last over is about to start. Atherton on strike for Cambridge. I don't think there's any relation to the <laughs> to the famous Atherton. So Although Atherton at the far end. So the, the last over will be bowled from the Gresham Road end, and which is the end that we're uh, positioned at in our, our commentary desk. And Atherton, uh, that squirts out into the covers, and they run through for the single Cambridge. Uh, 118 for six. This is now Elahi on strike for Cambridge. It's funny, actually, we made the, made the joke about Atherton, the, the Cambridge Blues. We played against Leeds Bradford earlier this year, and uh, Atherton's son do, does actually play for them. Mm. He's, uh, he's quite a good player. As far as I know, he's got a contract at Middlesex, and he scored a few runs against us, no surprise there. As the next delivery comes in again, right arm over, uh, squirted out into the covers of the same fielder. Uh, it was a bit of a, a bit of a, a bit of a comedy. They thought they may as well go for the single. I think if it was earlier on in the match, they wouldn't have done. But uh, the uh, the fielder went for the direct hit, didn't quite get there, and Cambridge do take that single, 119 for six with four balls to go. Um, so uh, other than uh, Aaron Amin, he says uh, likely it's about three or four for for Cambridge. Uh, as the next delivery comes in and is oh, it's, uh, squirted up into the air, but safe. And uh, again, Cambridge run through for another single. Um, aside from Aaron and in Nathan, who else uh, should we be looking out for in the batting side of things for Cambridge today? The other form batter has definitely been uh, the fresher, Harry Huyon um, from Seven Oaks. He's, uh, as far as I'm aware, he spent a good bit of last summer involved with the Kent Second Eleven. Um, or proceedings and uh, he's scored a lot of runs for us this year he's uh he's he's so far this season he's been pretty much guaranteed for a very useful 60 or 70 at the top of the order as we look at and there's a run out here a mix up the non-striker's end the ball was hit straight back to the bowler the non-striker ran and was sent back and it's an easy run out there um as cambridge as this game comes along to it's yeah they were just running for everything in in this over aren't they and uh, uh that of, will uh bit of a sad protracted end now yeah it will unfortunately uh, that's never going to uh, that's that's never going to end well. You might you might get a get away with a couple, but it's only a matter of time. And yeah, Cambridge 120 for seven now with just a couple of deliveries remaining. Um, and uh, the the game was scheduled to start at four. We should be underway. I'd have thought by about 20 past. So we're not too far behind schedule. And uh, obviously T20, uh, they fly by pretty quickly. The emphasis is on quick changeovers, uh, quick breaks. So uh, we should have uh, an action packed. Uh, afternoon f uh, ahead for you uh, as Cambridge and Oxford men's teams take each other on uh, very shortly. Yeah, that was Atherton who who got run out, unfortunately, I think. But um, but yes, but I mean back to Harry. He's he's a very positive opening batsman, and uh, he loves scoring square through the offside. So any width, he tends to he tends to throw his hands at it and and punish it. Um, and he's 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 quite quite fun to watch actually quite an, quite an elegant looking batsman so I'm looking forward to seeing how he goes today like I said he, he is in good nick and how much has uh, Cambridge taken other single towards the end of this game how much will the uh, the teams know about each other's strengths when you say there uh, Harry who are, is a uh, strong square on the offside will, will Oxford be aware of stuff like that um, probably not 
to be honest with you, because like I said, he's a first year, so they might not have seen a lot of him. Um, other players potentially, because generally there's there's always every year there's quite a bit of consistency in the squads. There's always at least four or five guys who um, who stay on and have played against each other. So in in that regard, yes. But in, in that specific example with Harry, because he's a first year, I, I suspect. Um, they won't know a lot about him. So dot ball off the final delivery of the match and Oxford are triumphant here by 25 runs. They've won the women's varsity match. Cambridge finishing on 121 for seven uh, after Oxford's earlier 146 for four. Uh, the players shake hands there out in the middle and uh, rather, Oxford... Rather bump elbows. Uh, oh, that's true. Yeah, there was... Oh, I think there's some, there may be some fist bumps going on there. I can't quite figure it out. No, I think it is mainly elbows, isn't it? And uh, uh, yeah, still, still, uh, the the players are well used to this, but it's me that needs to get used to it. <laughs> used to the changes here as uh, as the roller comes out uh, to prepare this pitch for the men's game. Julian. So we'll have a men's game in, when would you say, Nathan, sort of 10, 15 minutes to give them a change around? I think so, yeah. I think the ground's been coming on now with the roller. They'll give it a quick roll, and I think as soon as they're, as soon as they're done, um, I imagine we'll be getting underway. I imagine uh, the two captains will be going out to toss very soon. OK, well, we'll bring you the details of the toss as soon as we have. And back, as we say, with full commentary of this Varsity T20 match at live from Fenners between Oxford University and, of course, Cambridge University. At first, though, we'll get the latest news headlines. On your radio, on your phone and here. Play Cambridge 105 Radio. This is Cambridge 105 Radio. From the Cambridge News Desk, I'm Tony Barnfield. Liberal Democrat, Labour and Independent groups in Cambridgeshire County Council have signed a deal after Conservatives lost control in last week's election. The agreement includes a policy framework, protocols for working arrangements between the groups and a new committee structure. Cambridge MP Daniel Zeichner has signalled his approval of the deal. The new mayor of Cambridgeshire and Peterborough has criticised government plans to introduce first-past-the-post voting for his position in future. Labour's Dr Nick Johnson beat the previous Conservative mayor, James Palmer, in last week's election, but only because of second-preference votes. Government scientists are keeping a close eye on the coronavirus variant first identified in India after it was confirmed that four people have died with it in the UK. The Prime Minister is to hold a news conference at five o'clock as England's lockdown is due to ease further from Monday. England's coronavirus R number has risen slightly from 1 to 1.1. The lower band remains at 0.8. It means that on average every 10 people with coronavirus will go on to infect between 8 and 11 others. Portugal has confirmed that tourists from the UK will be able to travel to the country from Monday. It says anyone arriving from the 17th of May must have had a negative test result. Professor Mary Beard is to pay for the living costs of two classics undergraduates from underrepresented groups for the duration of their degree study. Her £80,000 gift has been named the Joyce Reynolds Award in honour of her pioneering classics tutor, now aged 102, who will be talking to me in an archive interview on Sunday at 2pm. Sport and Cambridge United has announced that Barry Corr has been appointed to the first team coaching staff. He joined the club in July 2019 as academy development coach. Today's announcement confirms his permanent switch to first team coach. And that's the latest from Cambridge 105 Radio. Cambridge 105 Radio. Advertising on Cambridge 105 Radio is affordable and effective. Find out how you can get your business on air to a potential audience of 150,000 people by checking out cambridge105.co.uk. You may feel isolated, but you are not alone. Lifeline Helpline is here to listen, help you explore options and connect you with other services. We are here for you. The line is available every day from 11am to 11pm on free phone 0808 808 2121. Calls are confidential and you can choose to remain anonymous. Lifeline is operated by your local mental health charity Lifecraft and is available to anyone over 17 living in Cambridgeshire or Peterborough. Just your average night. Fraser's upstairs gaming online with his mates. Sophie's streaming her favourite tunes in her bedroom. Mum's downloading the latest drama box set. 
and Dad's liking kitten videos on his phone. But this isn't your average night. Thanks to City Fibre's full fibre network, everyone's gaming, streaming and scrolling at breakneck speed. Join Cambridge's gigabit revolution today. Head to cityfibre.com slash Cambridge 105. Scammers never give up in their quest to trick someone out of their money. Money that is often used for organised crime, such as drug trafficking, people trafficking, prostitution and terrorism. They contact people by post, telephone, on the doorstep or online with all sorts of enticing offers, false promises or threats to get them to part with personal information or money. You might think you could spot a scam and would never become a victim. Don't be complacent. Anyone can fall victim to fraudsters. Cambridgeshire and Peterborough Against Scams Partnership can help you to stay safe. Visit cambridgeshire.gov.uk slash against hyphen scams to find out more. What does your home need to feel complete? Gap Home Improvements have been helping customers give their properties that curb appeal for over 20 years. You've seen our vans in your area providing dedicated support to families across Cambridgeshire. Windows, doors, garden rooms, conservatories and warm roofs. We offer free quotations in a pressure-free environment. In person, on the phone or by video call, our consultants will help you realise your property's true potential. Call Cambridge 914 567 or visit gaphomeimprovements.co.uk today. Cambridge 105 Radio. Welcome back to Fenners, so where it seems to have marginally brightened up, just ever so slightly. Not that we're expecting rain or anything. What we are expecting is the start of the men's varsity T20 match uh, between Oxford University and Cambridge University. Uh, Nathan and Chris are still here. Nathan, you've got uh, news of the toss, I think. Yeah, I believe so. They, Without us realising it, because we're obviously on the far side of the, of the ground to the pavilion, but uh, since the, the women's game ran a little bit late, they obviously did a toss on the side of the pitch, on the side of the boundary, um, while that was still going on. And it looks like Cambridge have won the toss and have decided to bat. So does that give them, you would say, that they've chosen the right course here? Because we don't know what's going to happen as it starts to maybe cloud over a little bit more and uh, you know potentially dusk on the way. I think so. I mean, normally fielding second in a, in a late game as the light fades might be a little bit difficult. But as we said before, I don't think that's going to be an issue with the pink ball. It's quite bright and should be very easy to see. Um, I think in terms of the pitch, I think that's definitely the right decision because it's been spinning all day. It's just been the same pitch that has now had two games on it, so it will have deteriorated. So it's not going to be spinning any less, basically, but as, I, as the match goes on, if anything, it's going to be a lot more. Well, that's my point. I think that's my point. Yeah, yeah it's going to be spinning a lot more. So batting second um, with... The two Cambridge spinners who are both will both spin the ball quite a lot naturally, but then with the added help of the pitch and also hopefully with the pressure of runs on the board and in a chase playing on a spinning deck, I think that's definitely the right call for Cambridge to bat first. OK, well, we'll see what happens in the next few moments as we uh, as we speak. They're still, well, they've still got the old broom out. There's a, a barrow uh, in the middle. What's, what's going to be in the, inside that barrow, Nathan? I think some sawdust. Um, the sawdust. Just, they, just, it'll be... Will there be some damp patches actually out there from so previously? I, I can remember one very big one on the side of the pitch, which won't affect anything because it's too far off. Um, the groundsman's also repainting the, the oh, crease yes, and the wide see lines. That. It's, it's not often you see that. And the, I guess the, we get so used to you know, stumps these days which light up and flash or uh, have a camera <laughs> in the centre of them. These, these are just regular um, regular stumps. You can go and buy at the local sports shop, presumably. <laughs> sadly, yeah. Sadly, we don't have quite the budget for the for the flashing bales or the zing bales, I think, as they're <laughs> called. Um, although, to be fair, I have played some club games that have had them, so I don't think they're the most expensive thing in the world. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think, uh, no, we don't. We don't. We're just regular good old wooden stumps for us. Yeah, one thing we have got here, uh, we, we may not have the flashing stumps, but we do have a video feed which uh, you can uh, tune into if you want to. Just go to the Cambridge 105 radio website. That's cambridge105.co.uk. If you look at the top right-hand corner, little button there says live cricket. Just click it and you'll be uh, taken to uh, coverage of the match and we'll be with you, I think, probably now through to around quarter past, half past seven. 20 over game with 10, 15 minutes interval in between? Yeah, normally about 10 minutes. I think in, in 2020, that's that's normally the standard. And I think especially now that we've been running a little bit late, I think they'll try and squeeze that as much as possible. OK, now I know a few moments ago you went through with uh, Chris some of the uh, the players to watch. Uh, but for those of us, those just joining us, a uh, quick uh, run through in terms of uh, uh, top batsmen. Oh, well, for Cambridge, I mean, the, the, the guy who's definitely going to take the headlines, hopefully, is, is Aaron Amin. He's the 
we call him Bomb Squad because he, he hits lots of bombs. Uh, he likes to clear the ropes and uh, he, he hits the ball very cleanly. So I think he should be batting three or four. The other guy who's been in very good nick for Cambridge is Harry Huyon, the, the fresh air from Fitzwilliam College. He's uh, he's essentially every game been good for a 60 or 70 at the top of the order and, and quickly at more than a run of ball. And do you sense that either of those two can go on to, to, to play at a high level at uh, at some point, maybe going all the way to uh, uh, Michael Atherton Heights and you know get a column in the Times and everything? <laughs> I'm not sure about a column in the Times, uh, but Harry, as a fresher, he's he's still quite young. He's he's just come from the the Kent second eleven um, setup. I, I don't think he may or may not be involved with them later on this summer. So that's right. to be confirmed. Aaron is a bit older. He's he's in the last year of his. I think he's doing an economics degree. Um, so he's about twenty one, twenty two. Um, he was involved with Middlesex age grade all the way through. Um, but I don't think got much of a look in past once that age grade went to went to senior stuff. But. Uh, but uh, still an incredibly talented cricketer. Yeah. Well, what's your career history, Nathan? How did you get uh, get get started in this? What in 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 the cricket? Um, yeah. Well, I mean, as I, as you may or may not be able to tell from from how I sound, I'm not from here. I'm originally from Dublin, so I started playing over there. Um, and I always get asked uh, how much of a cricket scene there is in Ireland, and the answer is always is more than you think. Um, so you do get the you know, islands. Um, well, I think they fam- famously beat the West Indies, got them all out for something like forty six. But I think there was was some Guinness involved in in, in that one at some well, point. I mean, but the they great... they do play international matches. Oh yeah, well they, they more more than play international matches. I mean we're now a full a fully fledged te- uh, ICC member, which means we play Test cricket. And of course the greatest ever England limited overs batsman is Irish Owen Morgan. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to claim that one. So yeah, so I mean I played a lot in school and uh, for for club for what YMCA cricket club in Dublin. Um, up until I was 18, and then came over to to Cambridge to do um, to do my undergrad here, and uh, I had been playing here at Fenners um, for the last. This is now my fifth year. I, I did a four year degree and managed to stay on for an extra year of M, uh, for an MPhil, um, which may or may not have been just to get an extra year of cricket. And the degree is in what? Uh, so the undergrad was in classics, and uh, the MPhil is also in classics. That's uh, so, because it's interesting. I've, in the in the news this morning, we had uh, uh, Mary Beard, who is uh, giving a bursary, her retirement present, I think she's uh, put uh, put it as, um, in order to see two you know potentially underprivileged students make it all the way through uh, uni in the future in in the classic classics department as, oh, that's as, interesting as, as well. I'm, so I missed that, but yeah. So what, what do you um, you know? I'd, is is there a lack of diversity amongst what? amongst amongst students? One hundred percent, particularly in the classics faculty. I mean, and do the stu- do as a student, do you notice that yourself? Oh, one hundred percent. I probably wouldn't notice it more. Uh, you know, being being an Irish man, I probably wouldn't notice it as more as others. I mean, I've got some friends um, who do quite a lot of work in trying to diversify the classics faculty and and speaking to them and their experience. Yeah, it's it, it's not the most diverse faculty in the world, but I know they are trying to they're trying to fix that. Okay, um, it's Cambridge 105 Radio. We're live at Fenners for coverage of the T20 varsity match between Oxford University and Cambridge University. Cambridge have won the toss and have elected to bat. Uh, they've also disappeared, so I presume they're sort of getting ready to um, uh, to come out with the fir- well, first two batsmen shortly. Well, I can see the two openers there on the far side of the ground. They're both there, hanging, sitting on their bats on the on the on the boundary's edge. There's no sign of the umpires. The Oxford players are are going through some bowl throughs on the square. So they look like they're pretty much ready to go, like I said, as are the Cambridge openers. But uh, I haven't heard a bell yet, which is normally the five-minute mark. Um, right, so when the bell rings, it will be five minutes exactly? or will Generally, they, that's, what, that, that's what they say. But I, given how everybody is ready, I assume once it goes, everybody will just head straight out. Lords, of course, they made a great big fuss about whoever's ringing the bell. Is it just whoever happens to be around here? It's generally just the two umpires. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's outside, outside <laughs> their changing room. They just do it on the way out, I think. Nothing, No, no fanfare around it. So uh, we've had two matches here already today. Is this match going to be on the same pitch as well? Yeah, same pitch for all three games. It's kind of like a. We used to do it. We used to do it separately. The the men's second team, the women's blues, and the men's blues in terms of the 2020s on different days. But we've decided a few years ago to copy the the kind of T20 blast finals day model of getting it all in one day and making a big day of it and making an event that people can come and watch. Obviously, sadly. Last year it didn't happen for obvious reasons, and this year, for equally obvious reasons, we can't get people to come in and watch. But uh, the idea is, yeah, you play on the same pitch f- um, for the three games. 
the uh, Oxford bowlers are out in the middle, uh, running through their their drills and, and warming up. And can you see from here over the other far side who's going to be opening the batting for Cambridge? Yeah, I recognise Harry's uh, maroon lid, his helmet. That's Alabi Harry, who we were spoken about earlier. And I would be shocked if it's not Nick Taylor, the skipper, who joins him. Okay, so the the team, uh, the the Cambridge team, just to run through: Nick Taylor, Harry Huyen, uh, uh Joe Van Darawal, Aaron Amin, as you've mentioned. Uh, Alex Moen, Ed Hyde, Sam Turner, Madara Serenaika, James Vitali, uh, Aaron Agarwal, and Jan Cross. Or is it Jan or Jan? Jan. Jan Cross uh, is uh, the the Cambridge eleven that we have here. Uh, I'll run through. I'll run quickly through the Oxford eleven as well. Uh, Tom Nodder, George Hargrave, Freddie Foster, Will Wright, Rob Wright, Chris Mingard, Owen Marshall, Jake Duxbury, Owen Allsop. Omar Mohammed and Will Barker. Uh, any of the Oxford guys that we should be keeping an eye on that we'd be wary of? Yeah, so when Nathan? I played in varsity in 2019, um, Hargrave was the one who smashed us to all parts. He's, he's a very good player. I think he's another one who's done quite a lot of underage county stuff. But from what I understand, though, this season, he hasn't actually played that much cricket. Um, so I think he's probably the most talented Oxford batsman, but I don't know what type of form he's in because, uh, like I said, I don't think he's played a lot. So the umpires are now starting uh, to make their way into position. Uh, two batsmen are uh, on the way. Uh, Nathan, I'll ask you to uh, say a few words, and that will allow um, Ollie to slip into Chris's seat uh, for the first commentary of the Varsity T20 match between Cambridge University and Oxford University. So it is Nick Taylor who's striding out to the middle with Harry Huyon um, to open the batting. Uh, Cambridge looking... Very fresh in their new light blue kit. Um, we used to actually play in a very similar dark kit to Oxford, which used to annoy quite a lot of us. Um, so it's good that we now have the the fresh light blue strip, which, if I may say so myself, is looking is looking very nice out there. Um, I suspect it will be Nick as the captain who will line up to take the first ball. Um, still waiting here to see who will be opening the bowling for Oxford. The keeper has his helmet on, so I suspect it's it might be a spinner, but I'm not quite sure. Um, it will be Nick who's on strike. Uh, he's down at the striker's end. Uh, Bowling will, Oxford will start from the pavilion end. As Nick lines up, I think he's batting on middle stump. He just asked for there. I think it is. I think it's Foster who's opening the bowling, the left arm spinner, for for Oxford. Interesting. I think this was a this was a ploy that. Uh, we had anticipated them coming in, opening up with some spin. Um, maybe looking to turn the ball away from the right-handed Taylor. He's going to come left arm around the wicket. Umpires are just waving to the scorers, and it looks like we're ready to go. Brilliant start that from skipper Nick Taylor. Long hop outside off stump, and he has dispatched it away through the covers and to the fence and an excellent start there for Cambridge yeah welcome along to our coverage of the T20 varsity between Cambridge University and Oxford University Ollie Slack and Nathan Johns with you bringing you the the power play of the first innings here it's a great start that is from Cambridge Nick's head of a bounder off his first ball a dot to follow up yeah it's interesting there you say power play I'm sure uh the, this the, as a spinner he would want his cover out normally but obviously he can't have it out because only two two fielders are allowed outside the 30 yard circles at the moment as Nick Taylor looks to play another one through that through that cover point region but plays and misses outside his off stump yeah, it's a, an interesting tactic isn't it it's operating from the start of the match with spin nowadays Nathan yeah it seems to be quite a oh, big LBW shout big shout there but uh, that one is turned down as I think from our angle it looked like it was it was heading down leg um, yeah I mean it's it's it's, it's a challenge to the batsman isn't it with only, with only two fielders out do you have the confidence to go over the top and, and, and take the spinner on um, Nick didn't have to there as he flayed his first ball away through point as he drives again and drives hard and drives it to mid off for no run um, I'm trying to see who the two fielders out that Oxford have put out it looks like they've got a deep mid wicket or cow corner and long on so they obviously think Nick is going to try and hit against the spin into the leg side. In comes the bowler again now, full of length, and Nick Taylor driving that through the covers, but stopped, and uh, that'll be the, the first over done. That was Hargrave there, a point the, with the long hair, um, who stopped that one. He's, he's the one we were speaking about earlier, 
who uh, has a, has a good history of in, in varsity matches against Cambridge. Um, just trying to see who will be who will be sharing the new ball from from our end. So will they be expecting much swing, Nathan, early on with the the cloud cover? A little bit, but the pink ball it doesn't do much. I mean, it might do a little bit. When we played earlier on in the second team game, I know one or two of our bowlers managed to get it to move actually off the pitch a little bit rather than in the air, but that's not particularly unusual for this this Fenner's deck. It, it generally is pretty true while having a little bit in it um, for the seamers. Um, so it might swing a little bit early on, but nothing out of the ordinary, I don't think. It looks like Ben Fisher, who will be bowling for Oxford. Down on the team sheet originally that I got sent as the 12th man, so you know maybe Oxford have had a, a bit of a niggle and had to swap it around, or he was included. There's a little bit of a typo, but Ben Fisher to bowl here as he runs in right arm over just back of a length and cut away to backward point, but stopped no run. He's got away with that one. That was a big, big short and wide one outside off. And <laughs> Harry Hu Young's on strike. He's normally very good at in that in that area, maybe because it was his first ball. Um, couldn't quite pick the gap, timed it very nicely, but hit it straight to the man at point for a dot ball. How do these two often operate as an, as an opening pairing, these two batsmen? Very busy, um, like like to rotate the strike a lot, um, especially Harry. He, he loves to put the, field, the fielders under pressure and, and make them work hard. Um, Harry likes likes to throw his hands through width, and if they do, especially with cover up, um, he will look to, to hit that offside boundary. Whereas as Nick, Nick is maybe a little bit more circumspect to start his innings, but the two generally complement each other quite well. Fisher in now for the third ball of the innings, back of a length and pulled away. Didn't really get hold of that one. Who on and straight into the grass with the Oxford fielder again. Another one that Fisher got away with there. A uh, short ball that just sat up around chest height for for Huyon to pull. Um, he just mistimed his shot and hit it straight to the man in the ring at square leg. And he'll be a little bit frustrated with himself there. Um, but again, early on in his innings, he'd back him to put those away fairly quickly. Yeah, three dots to start this over. The fourth ball incoming now, full of our length. That one driven down the ground, but stopped by the man at mid off. A decent stop there and. Uh, Four dots. The pressure burning a little bit on who you on here. Yeah, a little bit of pressure. I mean, Harry maybe a little bit frustrated that he's missed out on two short balls there. Decided to use his feet a little bit and walk at Fisher, and he got a good, a lot of that drive actually. It sounded very nice off the middle of the bat, but again, straight to a fielder. Fisher in again now, right time over, back of a length again, and once again, similar story. Who on doesn't quite get hold of that one. Bottom edge of the bat it seemed, and and into the ground. And that's another dot in the over. One ball to come. I think that's a sign of a pitch that's had two games on it previously. <laughs> that one just didn't quite sit up as much as the, the other ones did. Um, or at least the one that Huyon did uh, time quite nicely to point earlier in the over. Fisher coming in for the final ball of the over. Full length that time. Driven to mid-off and out. Oxford strike first and get a wicket early. The pressure was building on Huyon. A full ball. And he decided to drive it straight down the ground. But straight down the throat of the Oxford fielder. And... Uh, that's an early wicket there for Oxford. Yeah, classic, few dots, a bit of pressure. Um, Harry got a ball that he looked like the look of, was pretty full, probably was there to try and get underneath and hit hit straight and hit over, over the ring. But uh, he just didn't quite get underneath it enough and also probably hit the toe end of the bat a little bit as he hits it straight down mid-off's throat. It looks like this is Joe Van Darewell coming out to bat now. I think the game plan in terms of the batting order would have definitely be dictated by... The situation, and I think Jovan was definitely the man who comes in at three if there was an early wicket. Um, I think they're probably they're trying to put Amin back a little bit and um, to try and protect him a bit from the new ball. But uh, Jovan, we were talking about players in form. It's probably a bit harsh not to mention Jovan earlier. He scored quite a few runs. He, he, he has batted a little bit lower down the order because he, cause he can bowl some some seam up as well. Um, so he's, a, he's, he's an all-rounder option. But... Um, He's he's got a promotion today because he's he has actually batted quite well. Um, he's uh, despite his his size, he does hit he hits one of the cleanest balls in the club, and he can hit the ball quite a long way. So if he's batting at the other end, if he's batting at the the pavilion, then we could be in danger. Could we? Potentially deep, deep long off. Pot potentially he he likes on, he like he likes going straight. Yeah, long on cow corner is his area. So at the at the next over, we might be in the game there. I'll tell the engineers to possibly pull the cameras in if it is the case, but the first ball of the third over of the match is a dot. Nick Taylor on strike. Again, just a full of a lamp squeezed out into the offside and to the boundary, and the sweeper comes forward to collect. It's interesting, Oxford has changed their field here. They now have an offside sweeper. Mid-on has come up into the ring, and they've put a man out on the offside, which I think is the right call with the ball spinning away from the right-hander. I think at this stage of the game, 
Um, I don't think the Cambridge batsmen are going to look to hit against the spin, considering the pitch is turning as it is um, and trying to go over mid on. I think it's that's a much better field placement to have that man out at deep cover. Yeah, perhaps just a too risky an option early on. But it looks like another field change. Yeah, mid midwicket's come in and deep and square leg has gone out deep. I suspect that's for a sweep shot. Foster comes in again. Then that's a good length ball and. Dohal leans on that one into the offside and they come through for a quick single. Yeah, Jovan off the mark for his ball. Um, good running that. Just hit it just to the just to the left of extra cover. Of course, with that gap there now with the man who has gone deep back on the offside. So Jovan's off the mark straight away as Nick comes back on strike. Now, the confusion for people on the stream is that Jovan's wearing a number seven Hyde shirt. <laughs> oh, there is a story behind that. <laughs> Foster comes in again and Nick Taylor squeezes that one again out towards mid-off, but it's no run. Uh, maybe maybe at the end of the over, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll explain why he's wearing number seven Hyde. Sure someone else with a number seven. Maybe Hyde's got a, a couple of extra shirts, but so decent length baller. Yorker right in at Nick Taylor's feet and again dug it out but couldn't get a run. So again, good opening spell of bowling this from Oxford. And again, just straight down leg side. A touch should be a wide, I think, unless it flicked a pad on the way through. No, wide is given. Um, of course, leg side wides today. Um, the long story short of that is that Jovan forgot when the quick hit order went in a few months ago. Jovan forgot <laughs> to buy a shirt, and thankfully Ed Hyde, who is our wiki keeper today, bought two shirts. So there are two Hyde number sevens. And he's bowled him. Oxford get another wicket and get another wicket early on. It's the captain. It's Nick Taylor. It's a lovely, well flighted ball. Yeah, that one looked Foster. that one looked like it just Nick was playing for a bit of spin there, and it might have just gone on with the arm. Might have been an arm ball for Foster because it, it bowled him through the gate. So maybe Nick was playing for some spin there, and as a result, left it left a bit of a gap between bat and pad as that one just went through. Um, I think this might be Aaron coming into bat now. I'm trying to see. He's quite far away. Um, <laughs> we'll we'll see in a second. But yeah, um, good piece of bowling that to to remove the skipper um, Nick Taylor done by one that just went straight on with the arm. So Nick Taylor gone for four, the captain, and. Um it does look like Aaron Amin coming in. He's down at four on my scorecard. But uh, it's a disappointing start for Cambridge. You don't want to lose wickets early on in the power play. And they've already lost two in the opening three overs now. Yeah, it's been an excellent start from Oxford. They've they've just they've they've pitched the ball up and, in, and invited Cambridge to come at them. And um, Cambridge maybe haven't, and as a result, there's been there's been a few dot balls building and that's led to led to a bit of pressure. Um, as we saw with the Huyon wicket and then there that one with, with Nick Taylor. That was just a an excellent piece of bowling that you know Nick would have been Nick's been here since ten o'clock this morning watching the watching the twos game and he's watching the ball spin spin quite a lot and then he gets one that doesn't so I suppose that's maybe a little bit unlucky for him. Well, Oxford on top early on here at Fenners. You're listening to Cambridge 105 Radio. Ollie Slack and Nathan Johns bringing you ball by ball coverage as Fisher comes into bowl for Oxford now. Start of the fourth over and that's short, but no wide or no ball given from the from the umpire. That's a point. Is a a high a, a, a high bouncer now? Is it a, a wide or does it count as a no ball? I think it's a no ball. I could be wrong on that, but we played a game the other day, and the agreement was um, the second team that is we, the agreement was that it was a no ball. Um, but that I, would result in a, a free hit. But Fisher's and again, that's a shot. lot fuller. Oh, un unfortunate that Jovan's absolutely nailed a half volley outside <laughs> off, but straight to extra cover. That was a very aesthetically pleasing looking drive. You enjoyed that one. I did enjoy that one. Yeah. Sounded nice as well. <laughs> Shame about the results. Yeah, no runs from it. Cambridge seven for two here. After three overs and two balls, Fisher in again now. It's another full ball, just probably slightly more in the block hole, and and Jovan couldn't quite dig that one out for any runs. This is exactly what you know. Oxford are bowling to a plan here. Let's just pitch the ball up. Let's see if they're going to hit us over the top. Um, Harry tried to do that and 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 couldn't couldn't get the desired results um, with a bit of pressure on it's it's quite difficult actually to, to have the confidence to say yeah I'm going to take on the full ball and hit it over the top Fisher in again just, just slightly back of a length outside off stump and a swing and a miss there I suspect that's not the plan to offer that width <laughs> outside off because Joe Van just needs to get some bat on that and that's going to absolutely race away um, behind point for four again probably got away with that one a little bit so Fisher comes in again now, again, just back of a length, and that's a, a nice shot down to, to third man. Throw comes back in. Just a single, though, for Cambridge. Good piece of feeling there to keep it down to, to, keep it down to a single. Um, Aaron Amin is now on strike. He's he's definitely the cleanest hitter out of this Cambridge 11. Um, with with Taylor and Huyong gone now, he will, there'll be a lot, a lot of hopes riding on him. He's in excellent form. As we mentioned, the warm-up, he... Uh,
he's got off the back of scoring 140 not out against Essex twos in a friendly we played here about a month ago. So he's uh, he's in good touch. Fisher in a good length just outside off, looked quite wide from our angle, but the umpire just struts off to his mark, and that's the end of the over eight for two off the opening four. So a cracking start for Oxford here in the varsity. T20 men's match at Fenners. How quickly now, Nathan, will the batsmen be assessing the situation already, their, their target that they'd be hoping for? Because albeit only four overs gone, but two batsmen already come in and, and back in the shed. They'd be what, thinking to con cons consolidate a little bit no, I think I think I think they're going to look to come hard. I mean, that that'll certainly be the game plan. Whether that that is what ends up happening, as we said, you know, game plans can go out the window reasonably quickly in in varsity matches, particularly when you lose um, two early wickets. But the plan will certainly be to to come hard. Cambridge back quite deep today. Um, they've picked a side with quite a few all rounders in it. So the plan will definitely be to to look to be positive all the way through, and to especially during this power play. With only um with only two out, that's been a big focus of ours all season is to really try and capitalise on on the power play. In fact, it's actually quite unusual for us to see us struggling a little bit in the power play this year. We've actually gone gone quite well, um, and it's been one of the stronger areas of our game. The start of the fifth over now. The Oxford bowler comes in, just a good length ball. Got seen now from from both ends. Yeah, very good length that Jovan's just in in behind it nicely, but quite difficult on this pitch to uh, uh Jovan's actually calling for a new bat I think he's broken his bat on that <laughs> ball there so we'll have a bit of a delay here as uh, as Darwell goes off and asks someone to run on a bat but yeah that 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 tight line into the body and back of a length it's it's quite difficult to get away on on this pitch which is probably a touch slower now than it was at the beginning of the day and that being bowled by Will Barker for for Oxford of Merton College wearing the number 26 on his back in the deep dark blue shirts up against the light blues of, of Cambridge. Jovan's been given his selection of bats to work with there. Has I, he got many? I don't think I don't know. I don't know how many of those are actually his. Generally guys maybe might have about, have about two bats in the bag. Um well I, I certainly have two at least, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I, I suspect he has two or three unless somebody's been kind to, to send out their own bat there to I'm not quite sure. It's not it's not it's not the situation you see on on, on the TV when the 12th man runs out with about seven bats in his hand for for the for the pros to, 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 to choose from. Yeah, seems a world away when Joe Root has a choice of six bats. I actually think he's using, that looks like he's using Harry's bat. But I could. So in comes Barker again, full, on. full of a length ball outside off stump and an ooh and an ah behind the stumps, but no nick from the, from the batsman there. That was there to hit, wide outside off, very full, covers up. Um, that was definitely there to go after and, and, and try and hit that gap. So potentially a bit of a chance missed there from Cambridge. They're eight for two. In the fifth over here, Will Barker, the bowler for Oxford. Just a slight delay here as uh, as always. It wouldn't be a cricket match, would it, without a couple walking behind the bowler's arm on the sight screen? Surely, considering there's no there's no fans in. That's so true. So everybody who's in here is should, in theory, be a member of one of the squads that are playing today, so you'd think they would, uh, they'd would they know not to wander behind the side screen. Mm. But the delay is over. Barker's in again and bowls now. Good length ball outside of stump. Just played nicely from Joe Van Darawal. Into the offside, but defensive shot and no run there. It's hit in the middle of his bat, um, Darawal. He's, he's fine in the middle. He's just... Uh, He's he's trying to push into gaps that, that, that aren't there at the moment, um, especially with the, the offside field up right now. Looks to be a little bit nippy still out in the field. A few of the Oxford fielders have body warmers on. As Barker comes in again now, it's a full length ball and hit away through the oh, offside and brilliantly, brilliant. brilliant fielding. That's saved three runs there. Jovan's absolutely smashed that drive. We spoke before about the ball before, but hey, maybe he might have might have missed out on that full one. He didn't miss out on that one. He's absolutely crunched it through the offside and a brilliant diving stop for at, at cover to to save the boundary. Yeah, Will Wright, I believe, the man who did the fielding. So they managed to get through for a single. So Aaron Amin is on strike again now. As Barker comes in and bowls for Oxford. That's a full length ball driven into the offside, but no run. It's a really, really good opening spell, this from, yeah. from Oxford. Very tight. Cam should have to be careful that they don't completely not, you know, fail to utilise this power play here with only two fielders out. Um 
I think they've, as far as I can remember, there's only been that one boundary, which was the first ball of the game, which Skipper Taylor hit through through cover. But with the field up, they they really need to to try and take advantage of this a little bit more. Yeah, this is the fifth over, one over left of the power oh, play. That's a good delivery. After this, and that's a cracking delivery from Will Barker. He puts his arm in the air as if it was Jimmy Anderson running away to celebrate a wicket. It was a lovely ball, just back of a good length, nipped outside off stump, and not a lot the batsman could do about that one. Yeah, it looked like it might have moved a bit off the pitch there. Aaron Aaron's has been beaten outside his outside edge, but he, he to be fair, he, he kept the bat close to his body and, and played the line and just watched it sail past the edge. The prop problem is that's that's a, that's a good thing and maybe the longer format of the game but <laughs> at this stage you know what are we four overs in now um five now. five overs in there sorry beg, i beg your pardon um yeah the the time it's amazing how quickly those those overs disappear when when you're behind the eight ball a little bit ben fisher in now and bowls a full ball missed time though it looked like from joven darawal straight to mid off no run yeah, low full toss. I mean, batsmen are always frustrated when they don't hit those, but I mean, they always seem to get dot balls those ones, <laughs> and especially especially when the pressure's on. And those are the type of balls in an ideal situation you'd be you'd be like loving to hit away. Fisher in the Gresham Road end and a swing and a miss from Darrell. Looking to go over the mid wicket region with that man up in the ring. Tried to use his feet a little bit, maybe lost the shape, but just a touch um, as the ball goes through to the keeper. So this is, this is the last over of the power play, Nathan. We'll ask you in a minute what will be going through the batsman's head as Fisher comes in then and bowls. Full length ball driven nicely from Darrell Wild, but straight to the man. It looks like a, almost a short cover. It's another really nice looking drive off the front foot from Joe Van, but he just can't get it past that man at extra cover at the moment. Just a few balls left now for the power play. Are they thinking these next one of these next balls has to go, or, or are they not? I think so. I think Jovan naturally is quite attacking. As you can see, he's very keen to get on the front foot and try and hit it hard. We tried to there. Full toss. Oh, I think he's actually ended up nicking that along the ground to the keeper. He, he, he used his feet to try and come down and put Fisher under a bit of pressure, but uh, turned it into a full toss, which he wasn't expecting, and, and ended up just getting a little under edge that, to be fair, could have gone anywhere, um, but it's gone straight along the ground into the keeper's gloves. Well, Fish is just getting to the top of his mark, turns around and runs in again now. Right time over. Good length ball driven to the offside towards back. We'll put a quick single on. And just missed the stumps by the, the reaction and the Oxford fielders. Yeah, that's one of those ones where you have a shy. The fielder's quite deep on the ring. It's quite a long way for him to throw, and he's only got one stump to aim at. I think Aaron Amin probably looked safe enough, but it's one of those ones where you just, as a fielding side, you, you throw the arms up in the air and give it a big shout just, just, just to let him know that it might have been might have been tight, maybe to make him think twice about taking another quick one. Fisher in now. Again, just that sort of good length, back of a length. Difficult to get away from Aaron Amin. That's the end of the power play there. And that is, as you said, the end of the power play. Definitely Oxford's power play, first first blood to them. You always look at who wins the power play in these games. And, uh, and Oxford have definitely have definitely done that, um, taking those two early scalps and bowling plenty of dot balls. Well, it's a a score that you'd often see more in a in a 50-over match or a, a long, the longer form of the game. Cambridge 10 for two after six. Yeah, e even for the 50 over, I mean, generally we... <laughs> You'd like to go a bit harder. We'd, we'd like to go a bit harder <laughs> than that. And to be fair, I think Jovan in particular, Aaron, Aaron Amin hasn't had that much strike. I think he's, as, as I make it, he's not off four balls. Jovan's four or 15. He's he, he's actually hitting them quite nicely. He's just he's just struggling to hit gaps at the moment, which is uh, obviously the key feature of the power play with the, with the field up. So Bola comes in again now. Just punch to mid-off. On the front foot, Will Barker, the bowler for Oxford, the come through for a single. So Aaron Amin back on strike. Is this the man you'd want on strike really now to to try and up the ante for Cambridge? He, he's the man to definitely counter attack. Yeah, for sure. He, he's he's the one who you would back to to try and try and play some shots and put the pressure back on Oxford because um, at the minute it's it's definitely on Cambridge and and, and generally in these situations the you know attack is the best form of defence. Shots there he it's is. A lovely shot from Aaron Amin, just back of a length. From Barker outside off stump and cut away for four past backward point. Lovely shot that night. Lovely. Too much width, too short. Aaron's too good. He barely just just needed to get some bat on that and he dismissed it away behind point as it raced away to the fence. Um very elegant looking shot there. Um much badly needed boundary that. That's the first boundary since the first over. 
yeah, confidence boost for the batsmen out in the middle, but also for yeah. those batsmen still waiting to come in. A bit of relief that managed to get one away. 15 for two now. For sure. I mean, the guys sitting on the sitting on sitting up in the pavilion do not want to be be coming in, um, having to up the ante themselves. They'd much rather if these two were able to do another brilliant shot. Barker in again, just good length, flicked off the pads around him, and it's back to back boundaries in the seventh over. You can just feel the mood and the ground completely change. The, the the applause and the cheers from the from the Cambridge players up up in the pavilion is all of a sudden a lot louder now after back to back boundaries. Yeah, that all relieves some pressure as I said, for both the batsmen in the middle and those back in the pavilion. I think just over-adjustment there from the bowler. After going too wide the ball before, he's gone too straight. He's drifted onto Aaron's pads and he's and he's punished him through mid-wicket. And all of a sudden, Barker's under a bit of pressure, comes in. Good level. Looked to be a little bit of a slower ball there. Yeah, it looked like he just took that one out, took some pace off that one. Obviously thought, interesting one that, because that means he obviously think Aaron is coming hard at him, but I don't think Aaron is particularly going hard and he's bowled too you know, balls that deserve to be hit in a short wide one and then a half volley on leg stump and uh, his his first instinct after being hit is to go to the slower ball, which is an in interesting one there because I don't think Aaron was actually coming that hard at him. Not a bad result. Aaron in back off strike now. So Joe Van Darawal is, is the man facing as Barker comes in. A bit of a shuffle of the feet outside off stump and misses straight through to the keeper, but it's a wide ball. So an extra onto the Cambridge score. Good over this so far. Uh, Ten off, I think, at least as, as far as I make it. Um, that's actually the type of delivery you would want to bowl a slower ball for. If you can see Jovan walk down at him quite early there. Um, so I'm surprised, having bowled his variation of the ball before, he didn't, in, in response to seeing Dyerwell walk at him, try something a bit different. So a little bit of pressure on Barker as he runs in. Right arm over. Again, a slower, a slower ball. ball. And this time it beats Jovan Dyerwell outside, off stump. And would that be a tactic from the seams as well, Nathan? They've seen throughout the day the ball turn a little bit, so they might be getting a little bit of a grip from their from their cutters and slow balls. I think so, definitely. Um, I think if, if if you've got those variations on a pitch that when you bowl into the pitch, there's a little bit of purchase, I think 100%, that's a very good option. Yeah, the beauty of batting first as well is you get to uh, assess the surface you're batting on and helps your bowlers adjust for when you come to bowl in the, the second innings. Barker in again now, that's a bold. really good ball, right in the block hole, but... Darrowell squeezed it out to third man and they come through for a quick single. I think that's the end of the over as well. So Jovan will keep the strike. He's done well there. Like you said, well executed Yorker. He's just dug that out down past point towards third man to get off strike. Chris Jordan back in to join Nathan Johns. Thanks, Ollie. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll call the next six overs and then uh, Ollie will be back uh, for the... Uh, Final six or seven overs of the Cambridge innings here at Fenners, uh, and be joined by uh, by Will Dobson, the coach of the uh, women's uh, women's team who played earlier, who just nipped off to get a sandwich, but he's going to be back with us fairly shortly. Um, but uh, Nathan, if you're happy to to continue uh, for now, bit of leg spin now from Oxford. Uh, Mingard is coming on. Um, He's kind of he's he's moved up and down between the two sides between first and seconds over the years. I played against him a few times, um, but I think Ox one of Oxford's spinners um, was injured today, so I don't know whether I don't know whether Mingo would be playing regardless or not. But uh, he's a bit of a tricky customer. He drops one short first ball, which Jovan pulls out for a single into the leg side. As a leg spinner, he is a little bit susceptible to a few drag downs, especially early on in his spell, as a uh, as most wrist spinners are. I think. Yeah, that's certainly what we saw there. Um, Cambridge are 22 for two off uh, 7.1 overs as Mingard comes in right arm over, full delivery and driven down the ground. Uh, the uh, Cambridge uh, guys jog through for a single and hit we move on to 23 for two. Hit hard down the ground there, too long off by Aaron. I suspect they, this is... This is Oxford of three spinners today. This is definitely the one that they probably will look, especially Aaron. They will look to not let him settle. Darawal uh, this time uh, squirts one into the leg side. There, ooh, there's a, a bit of a, a bit of a conversation, shall we say, about whether to come back for the second. But it was uh, efficiently fielded, and uh, they kept it down to a single. Yeah, good, uh, good intent. Try and put him under pressure, force the two, but equally a good piece of fielding out there. Darawal seven off nine as Mingard comes in bowling to Aaron Amin and uh, he's forward and plays a defensive shot back to the bowler. Um, I was going to say Darawal is uh, about seven off 19. Is he 
kind of okay with that, is is happy to let Aaron do the scoring at the moment. I think if Aaron starts to go as as Aaron hits a, another flight of delivery down to long off there again, hit hard. Um, Jovan is quite attacking in his own right, to be fair. Um, I think which is probably why he's batting batting so high up. So I think you know he might be a little bit frustrated at the fact that he's that he's not going at a run of ball. Um, so we'll see how he reacts here. But normally he's very very clean striker in his own right. Mingard drops this one uh, short and Darawal uh, plays it out to the leg side, but no run. And uh, Yes, highlighting how quick an over of spin can be when you've uh, when you've had a couple of overs of, of quick bowling. Uh, that's the end of the over and uh, Cambridge 25 for two after eight overs of uh, this fast DT20 here at Fenners, just down the end of Mill Road here in the heart of Cambridge. Another spinner coming on. I was just about to say it's going to be interesting to see how Cambridge looks to play the spin because Foster opened the bowling. He's got two overs left. Mingard having just bowled one. He's got three overs and then we've got another four overs of off spin now from the pavilion end. So there's, there's 12 overs of spin there and like we keep saying there's a bit of purchase in it for the spinner so it's going to be very interesting and I think uh, you know how Cambridge play these 12 overs of spin is going to go a long way to dictating um, the result of this game. I suspect you know, I was having a net with Aaron yesterday and he, he does tend to, if the spinner pitches it up, to go after it. So it'll be interesting to see what they do, what, what they offer him and, and, and what he can he can do with it. Aaron, I'm in 11 not out from 10 deliveries with two boundaries and uh, Darawal is 8 not out from 21 at the other end. Uh, but it will be Amin to face this and he's tried to uh, drive it through the offside and it's fielded an extra cover. Uh, it's just a single and Cambridge 27 for two. Uh, did you see which bowler it was, Nathan? Sorry, I missed. I think I I'm missed just. It. As Darawal tries to work one uh, down to fine leg and they run through for the single. Yeah, I believe it's Owen Marshall, the off spinner. Um, we'll double check that now. One second, but I believe that's okay. who it is. Uh, number nine. Oh, yeah, that's right. Owen Marshall. Uh, well picked out there, Nathan. They're quite away uh, bowling from the pavilion and the far end as we look at it. And uh, this one is play and miss, uh, played and missed, played at and missed, I should say, by Aaron Amin. And it's through to the keeper, uh, who's obviously standing up to the stumps to the spinner and no run. That's the one Aaron has to be careful with, that kind of quicker, flatter one um, into the pitch. He's got to be careful going on the back foot because it's not going to bounce up and he has to make sure he, you know, he doesn't get LBW or, LBW or bowled on the back foot. Marshall in again and oh that was That's dropped that drop. was hit right back at him kind of head height slightly to his right he stuck his arm up uh, it it hit his hand uh, rather than his hand going to the ball uh, and deflected away and uh, they went through for a single Marshall bowls Shot. again and driven down the ground uh, but uh, long on is there fields and slightly errant throw that uh, actually no, it came straight back through to the keeper just through to not to the end that I was expecting which threw me a bit but uh, uh, it's um, uh, yet yeah, still one more ball to come in this over Marshall uh, right arm over and oh it's gone all the way through I think it's uh, fielder racing down trying to stop this on the boundary yes he's he's got it but uh, Cambridge Roo for two runs interesting Oxford have protection out there on the leg side at deep mid wicket um, for that shot, but Aaron obviously backs his power to clear him. He's gone for the slog sweep and it's just missed everything and, and run through a few bars. I was just going to say there, now that we've got to the end of the over, that could potentially be a big drop. I think uh, Marshall thought that that ball was hit a lot harder than it was. The way he stuck his arm out, it was as if he was just trying to get something on it and stop it, but the ball actually came through at head height um, rather than flying over his head. And uh, really, he should, he should have taken that, looking, looking back on that. And with Aaron and the destructive power he can have, I wonder how big a drop that will be. 20 over innings, of course, and uh, nine overs gone, Cambridge University, 32 for two. Uh, I mean, 11 and Darawal eight. Uh, and it's Mingar bowling a second over, right Shot. on leg spin, and it's oh. gone in the air. There's a fielder out there on the boundary. It's gonna be very close, it's gone for six just about had the legs I said shot a bit preemptively <laughs> there when he hit it I thought he absolutely nailed it but it is a long boundary out there and um, towards the indoor school at Fenners and there is a man at um, I didn't actually see he's, he's slightly hidden behind our view here there he, is, he comes into view but there is a man at deep mid wicket but yeah, uh, that was Marshall actually who bowled the last over that was it just cleared his head Mingard in again bowls and that is streets to the keeper no run I believe that was the first maximum of the Cambridge innings that's right 
So yeah, Lingard has uh, conceded 10 runs from his first uh, eight deliveries. In again, and bowls. And uh, again, swept, well, I say swept, it was uh, uh, pulled really uh, out into the leg side, this time fielded by Marshall and just the single. That is Joe Vanzari at mid-wicket, you know, the slog sweep off the spinner. That's where he'll look to go here. We just need to be careful. He, he, that one landed well short of the fielder and then the one a few balls ago had enough legs on it, but he just has to be careful to either pick the gap or make sure he clears the rope. Uh, Mingard bowling to Anin, uh, and it's just played out into the covers uh, on the offside, of course. That's where the covers are, and they run. And uh, again, I think we've just got one more delivery in the over. Again, Aaron might be a little bit frustrated there. Short ball, which he's hit very hard, but hit it straight to point a yard either side of him, and, and there's another boundary there. Mingard in right arm over, and he bowls. And Amin uh, this time drives down to long on, and they jog through for the single, fielded by Wright from Oxford. And I was miscounted there. We do have one more delivery in this over as Mingard now jogs in four or five pace run up bowls and uh, Darawal drives it through, well, pulls it through into the leg side. Fielded again by Marshall. Uh, Darawal likes that area, as you said, Nathan. Uh, the, um, Marshall's been in the action there at uh, uh, um, uh, deep mid wicket there. Yeah, <laughs> interesting one that. The, your off spinner is bowling at one end and then you send him out to cow corner to a guy who's hitting it there every ball. There's no there's no rest for him. The ball's, <laughs> ball's definitely following him at the minute and uh, it would have been interesting to see whether he would have held on if, if that if that six did land just inside the rope. Maybe maybe a top I don't know, maybe a taller man and it might have <laughs> it might might have been an opportunity, but Marshall is now back on the ball from the pavilion end and it will be Joe Van Dyrewell on strike. It's the halfway mark of the innings. Uh, the Cambridge innings, they won the toss. Uh, they uh, had a, a slow start on the first four overs, uh, but uh, uh, led uh, by Aaron Amin there. They come back a little now, now 39 for two off 10 overs. Uh, but this one, uh, s I think slightly uh, slightly false shot there from Darrell, but uh, he, he got back on it, squirt oh. it out into the leg side in no run. I'm just trying to think based on the field where he's going to go. If he's bowling it outside off, Jovan does like a reverse sweep. Oh, let's see. It's... Uh, uh, Jovan Darawal just left that one. Oh, it's, it was wide. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're we're at a slightly strange angle here. Difficult to tell until the uh, until the umpire gives a signal uh, whether it's a wide or not. But that one certainly was, uh, which is why Darawal didn't try and get any bat on it. This one he has tried to uh, play that out to uh, to long on, and again the batsman jog, th jog through for a single. Yeah, it's a much shorter straight boundary this side, and so we're talking about where Jovan might look to go. Um, I think Aaron Aaron is definitely get the front foot down the pitch and look to hit hard down the ground, and it is a shorter straight boundary this side. So he, if he does get a delivery that he can get underneath, he will back he will back his power to to hit towards the side screen. Uh, Marshall bowling from the pavilion end over the wicket, he bowls and it's uh, straight through the wicket keeper, and the batsman scramble through for a single. Looked like Aaron might have got a little edge on that. Um, I don't think it was a chance. I think it's hit. I think it's deviated and hit the keeper at the bottom of his shins. So I don't think that was a, a caught behind opportunity. But he's probably a little bit fortunate that he didn't see that one cannon back onto his stumps. As Marshall in again, and this time down the wicket, Darrell and kind of uh, squirts out into the leg side, uh, fielded, and again uh, just a single. So they're kind of they're keeping the scoreboard ticking over and rotating the strike. Um, the, the the over. Uh, before this, uh, we had that big six and then a couple of other kind of out close to the boundary, but uh, not, uh, not such quite attacking intent in this one. Oh, but there's that reverse sweep you were talking about. Not the uh, right batsman, wasn't though. from Darrell. <laughs> <laughs> not the right batsman. It was Aaron who played. I was talking about how Aaron will go look, look to go downtown and he plays the reverse. Um, that's the first top ball there's been in a while now. In the first six, I think top balls definitely killed Cambridge a little bit. But one thing they have done well since then is, uh, is managed to rotate. Um, these two will look to to add some boundaries onto those singles that they've been hitting. Marshall bowling uh, to Amin and he plays that out into the offside, into the gap, fielded by Mingard, they take the single and that's 11 overs gone. And we will just refresh our scorecards and give you an update very shortly. It's uh, Cambridge 105 Radio, uh, live from Fenners and it's the Varsity T20 match, Cambridge versus Oxford Universities, of course and uh, Cambridge won the toss, are batting, and we've got the score 44 for two from 11 overs here. Interesting, so both these spinners, Mingard and Marshall, I think have both two overs respectively, so they, in th all going well for Oxford, will bowl through. 
And of course, the opener, the left arm spinner, oh, Aaron goes large Aaron down goes the ground. Large. We feel the there, but it's over his head and right down towards our commentary position here. Six runs. Six runs. There's that power down Aaron. the ground we were talking about. Um, that's, you know, Aaron just loves that area. Um, tossed up by main guards. Probably a little bit too much flight on this pitch. You definitely want to be rolling into the pitch and making the batsman hit you off a of length. But uh, tossed up and Aaron's comfortably cleared long on. And that's the 50 up for Cambridge uh, in the 12th over. Uh, 50 for two now as Mingard bowls. And uh, again, oh, it's in the air this time and taken. And just one delivery after clearing the ropes for six. Uh, I'm afraid Aaron Amin has gone, Nathan. Yeah, again, well, I said Mingard probably shouldn't toss it up, but he's tossed it up again. Aaron's probably looked to go a little little squarer this time. He's looked to go over mid-wicket rather than straight and playing against the spin. All he can do is get an, an edge up into the air and he's caught a point. Um, may, yeah, good piece of bowling, I guess. If he, if he whacks you over his head, over your head, you just say, right, do it again. Give him another chance. And Mingard's won that one. Mingard has won that one. Uh, 50 for three. Uh, Cambridge are after a couple of balls of the 12th over. This looks like uh, Alex Moen is coming into bat now. Alex Moen, who was uh, who was down at number five and uh, is coming in at number five uh, with uh, Cambridge. Um, well, have you got an idea of what you think a decent score is now? Like what, what oh. are they going to be happy with? Well, getting to three figures or no, no, they'll get to three fingers, figures. Figures comfortably. Mo Moen's an excellent player. He's another guy who's played underage county stuff. I mean it's tough because it's difficult to get started here if those two had gone through you'd, you'd back them to score at 8-9 and over for the next the next the next few overs but I think look anything pushing 130 would be it would be a good score from this position I think that's probably not what they wanted what what they would have wanted um, at the beginning of the game but uh, you know well 130 would be, would be competitive though as we were saying with the uh, it's going to be fairly tough to, to bat last on this pitch and with Cambridge's two spinners. It will. Frustratingly, I think Cambridge could have picked three spinners, but uh, one of them has got an exam today. So, uh, <laughs> sadly, he's Rob, Rob Newby's not available. Um, but Mingard in, right arm over, and it's worked into the leg side. It's, it's a slightly... Uh, they're looking to come back for two, actually. Yeah, it was, uh, it was clever batting. There was uh, a big gap out there um, towards the fine leg area, and... Uh, Cambridge have picked up two runs. Alex is a bit of a different player from the from the other two, so Jovan and Aaron definitely look to hit strong down the ground mid wicket area. Alex will look to hit his gaps early on, and he, he plays a, he's another one who play, actually he plays a very excellent reverse sweep, or rather it's more of a switch hit where he'll completely change his stance and almost almost go left handed and look to hit through point. And it's definitely his go-to shot off the spinners. Mingard in again, and it's driven in th uh, into the covers. Oh, actually, no, it's towards, towards mid-off. Uh, takes no run. And Mingard coming back well after that six off the first delivery. And trying to sweep there, Moen, and it's uh, it's uh, drifted down to uh, uh, into the legs, uh, fine leg area, and they've managed to come back for two to finish off the over. Clever bit of batting that, Mo. So there's no short fine leg, so he's he's obviously trying to hit it for four in that gap. But he knows that if he does miss it, he's, he's shuffled across outside the soft stump. So if, if he misses it, he's outside the line, so he, he can't get out LBW. So it's a clever piece of batting, though. And we are just waiting for our scorecast to refresh to give you the score of 12 overs. It's 54 for three. And uh, Darrell, 18 not out from 30. With one boundary and Moen four from four uh, after uh, Amin was dismissed for 22 from 21 with two fours and that maximum down towards us just one ball before he was dismissed. Uh, as the spinner comes in again, Marshall, he's dropped another and one. again he's dropped one. I, that felt to me much a harder. more difficult one than the first one. So it's hit very hard. So the first one we were saying he probably thought it was hit harder than it was and he reacted accordingly when if he just you know stayed in the same position you would have called that that one was absolutely drilled and those type of ones you just stick out of hand and hope they stick and fortunately for Jovan that one didn't stick as he gets down the other end you can see what he's trying to do though he's trying to hit dead straight into that side screen over the bowler's head as Marshall again bowls there's that reverse sweep rare to see Alex miss it actually <laughs> uh, probably a little bit full Marshall's fired that in very full outside off stump as, as Alex misses but again the shot is on off spinner going to be bowling outside off and there's only one man 
behind square on the offside for that shot as Oxford actually now changed the field. Um, Mo Alex has played quite a few varsity games, so they they would know that he likes that shot. So they now put a second man in. They put a short third man in next to that point to add for some more protection against that reverse sweep. Quite big open spaces in the leg side there if they want to try and take the single. Um, that's what he tries to do, just works it into the leg side. They do take that single. Uh, Alex Moen moves on to five not out and gets himself down the other end uh, with Darrell back on strike. Uh, and he will uh, he will be feeling good, Darrell, as uh, he's, he's faced over 30 deliveries now and uh, kind of a basis to start attacking a bit more as he comes down the pitch and drives that into the leg side, but uh, straight to the fielder. Didn't quite get to the pitch of that one. I think Marshall might have seen him coming and bowled a little bit more into the pitch. It makes it harder to get underneath. Um, Jovan has faced a lot of balls, but he's um, he, he'd be definitely look to look to up, to up his scoring rate. Marshall in and bowls, and uh, Darrell uh, pulls that into the leg side, and uh, the fielder on the boundary does a decent job, and they just take the single. Oxford um, doing a very good job of restricting boundaries here. Yeah. They won't. They won't mind singles at all. Although there are there's a lot of gaps on those like on that leg side. These two run very well. They might look to take two. <laughs> well, maybe not, as he plays and misses. Play, plays and misses there. Uh, the wicketkeeper uh, takes it. Um, we'll uh, bring Ollie Slack back in now to see you through the last seven overs uh, of this Cambridge innings. And as Ollie uh, gets into position and uh, gets his headphones on, we await to see. Uh, yeah, it is going to be Mingard uh, to uh, finish his spell bowl his fourth over uh, from this Gresham Road end. Thank you Chris. 56 for three here after 13 overs. Will Dobson alongside me as well, Cambridge University Women's Assistant Coach. Will, thanks for joining us. Well, thank you very much for having me. Now we'll chat a bit more about the, the women's fixture later on. What have you made of, of this game so far then? Well, it's, it's, I think it's very interesting to see what a par score is because you know, we've had one game in the morning where the, batting, the team batting first scored 75 and then the second game when the team batting first got 145. And, and I kind of feel that Cambridge batting first haven't quite been sure what, what a good score on here is and, and, and the batting kind of reflected that so far. Yeah, Mingard just, as Chris mentioned, they're finishing off his spell here, so it's First ball just gone for a, a couple of runs and so advances down the pitch and hits straight to long off for a single. And you were telling me, tell me earlier, Will, that this uh, pitch has had a, a fair amount, or this wicket has had a fair amount of cricket on it over the over the last few days. Well, I, and I think it's a six-day wicket, effectively. Um, Mingard in again and just, just through straight through to the wicket keeper. Look to have possibly fought for a moment there, taking a nick, but uh, but no straight through, and Mingard back to his mark again. Well, and I think I think we're seeing, you know, it, it's it's quite slow and, and it's turning, which is obviously having having effect on on what's going on thus far. But that is a proper shot, isn't it? Reverse sweep. That's an inventive shot. I think that it's is. almost more more of a, a switch hit than a reverse sweep, but only for one. Alex Moen out to the well, <laughs> out to the offside boundary, but. Hit it almost left-handed in the end. He did. I mean, it's, it's amazing. You know, cricket's changed since my day. You, you do see a lot more of these <laughs> uh, these switch hits and reverses. Mingard in again, just back of a length, pulled away to the leg side, down towards deep square leg, and thrown in at pace from the the bowler on the fence there. And it's like it went away, just for a. It was just just another single, just a isn't single it? Single in the end, yeah. And I I think Cambridge will be wanting more than just singles at this point. Yeah, we are in the 14th over. The batsman advances. Turn the ball into a full toss out towards the leg side again and nicely picked up and a quick throw in and it's going to be a potential shot the stumps there but it looked to have hit a bit of a maybe one of the covers in front and pop up and well yeah I think it hit that Hessian matting didn't it <laughs> that we were talking about earlier but I think that's what that's what we need to do at this point is is actually push those twos really hard because singles singles aren't gonna aren't gonna post a score no of course Cambridge lost two early wickets in the first couple of overs and two early wickets in the power play. It was 10 for 2 off the first six overs. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think 10 for 2 is what, quite what the university <laughs> were aiming for for the, for the power play. I think I was uh, overhearing the conversation between the coach and the captain and 40 or 50, I think, was the, the target. So 10 was 
quite a long way short of that. Yeah, but they've recovered well, have they? Joe Van Dara well. And then Aaron Amin came in and hit a few big shots and now Alex Moen at the crease and Darawal goes big this time. It's up in the air and it's caught. And, and just as we were saying, Cambridge looking to rebuild. They go and lose another wicket. It looks like wickets are now tumbling at steady intervals. It, it was the right shot there, wasn't it? I mean, it was It was at the point when, you know, someone's got to go. There's five overs left. There's still wickets in hand. And I think he just uh, tried to sky the over mid-wicket and just got a bit, a bit out of the toe end of the bat. I guess there's clarity now, isn't there, Will, for the batsman coming in in the... There's no other way you have to go about it. You have to come in and you have to score straight from the off and, and try and look at big, big shots. That could potentially work in Cambridge's favour. It, it could, but I think, you know, I think you always need to, to make sure you've used up those overs. And, and even in 2020 cricket, you know, getting bowled out and, and not using your 120 balls is, is, is a fairly effective way of not winning a game of cricket. Um, so it is, it's, it's finding that balance, isn't it? We've got what, five overs left, 64 for four thinking like actually you know we won the toss we're going to bat first we need we need to get somewhere at least 120 from this point can we do 10 and over for for the last uh for the last six yeah that's what Cambridge will be thinking won't they that's what they will be thinking I mean I think they'll be thinking you know at this point we have to set a target get runs on the board and we'll go really hard you know for for the first uh few overs of the Cambridge power Oxford power play and and try and put a bit of pressure on them. Because I don't think that Cambridge are going to win the game if they keep knocking singles at this point. In comes the Oxford bowler again. Just a, a good length and flicked off his pads for a mowing and they're looking to come back for a, a second and they do. And that's fantastically run, isn't it? it? It's interesting watching 2020. It's almost that, that shot which isn't hit, hit hard is the one that you can get to. That when you smash the mid-wicket, might look very pretty, but but you only get one run for it. Owen Marshall in again now for Oxford. He bowls good length ball, almost driven on the up outside off stump for a moment, but it's gone into the leg side. And again, that's really good running yeah. from the Cambridge batsman, isn't it? And that's and that's case in point, isn't it? The one that you know it's a miss hit, dribbles out to the leg side, and that's where that's where the runs are. That's where the twos are, and it's a it's a big old boundary here. So so it, it is possible to push the twos if if you run incredibly well. Yeah, two examples there. Both brilliant bits of running from, from Cambridge and suddenly four runs in, in two balls. And and that's interesting, actually. As soon as that happened, Oxford have, have brought the deep mid-wicket up and now we have mid-wicket in the circle. And that's where it creates other gaps and potential other shots for the Cambridge batsman. Well, looks to have gotten away from the man at a very, very fine leg from Marshall's delivery there and they've run through for uh, another couple. Well now as soon as that as soon as that man comes up from from mid wicket there ends up being a huge gap doesn't there between square leg and long on with actually only effectively one field is saving one on the on the leg side. Marshall in again now. The right-handed orthodox spinner and just seemed to really die off the pitch and off his bat into the leg side no run to finish the over. 70 for 4 after 15 here at Fenners. And I think what we are seeing is it, it, is, it isn't the easiest wicket. You know, as we said, it's effectively a six-day wicket. It isn't the easiest wicket to time, to time the ball on. So it, it is going to be a question of bat first and then maybe reassess what a, what a decent score is. It looks like Freddie Foster is coming back on to bowl for Oxford, skippering the side today because Chris Searle is injured. Nathan told us earlier on he injured himself in the opening net of the season, which must have been, well, heartbreaking for him. And uh, Cambridge now with just, what, five overs to go, really looking to try and up the ante, as, as Will said. They'll go for their big shots. There'll be either lots of boundaries or you'd think a few wickets to tumble. It's one of those moments where something's going to happen pretty soon as in comes the bowler again now, just flicked outside the off side edge and Cambridge managed to run through for a single due to a fumble by the man at short third man. Yeah, I think Cambridge will be really looking to, to put a lot of pressure on these fielders, try and push as many twos as possible and then open up the gaps, get the fielders back in and, and that's when you go over the top, isn't it? Freddie Foster in a bowls and 
Moen trying the reverse sweep again, and he's trying that because out on this leg side, he's got three fielders by the looks of things, or maybe just the one. There's a couple of people walking around the boundary. You know, two fielders out on this leg There's side. Deep so wicked and, and long on, isn't there? And then Yeah, so the options are potentially to go over the infield on that offside. That's why he's looking to try the reverse sweeps and the switch hits. As Foster comes in again now, left arm, dock spinner, finger spinner, and just to have so maybe hit a pad or maybe just the wicketkeeper and I no think run. It's just gone spun past the outside edge, hasn't it? But it's interesting, as soon as you say that, we've seen cover point go much, much square on the boundary to try and get them to, to think twice about that reverse sweep. Then the gaps open up potentially through the cover region where the fielder came from. Another ball from Foster and another dot ball. This is where you think in T20 cricket is brilliant because something's got to give, isn't something's it? Something's got to give. Something's got to give, Will. Five overs to go and Cambridge need boundaries. In come Foster. And that has gone up in the air and it looks like it is another wicket. Oh, and he's fumbled <laughs> it. He's fumbled it. It was mowing with a shot. It was a top edge towards the man at a short, fine leg. And well, I think uh, it's Ben Fisher who spilled it. I was, I was about to say, I mean, you couldn't have picked any 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 better, could you? You predicted the fact that something's got to give, and uh, uh, they must have heard me. Thought we can't <laughs> let him have it. <laughs> say it right. In comes Foster again now, left arm finger spinner. Moen just driven down the ground, and it's another dot ball. This is a really good over from Foster. I mean, what he brought a himself over. on. What a fantastic! Uh, that, that's a fantastic over at this stage of the innings because that suddenly puts so much pressure on Cambridge. How many? Four of that over. Or just the three, just I believe. Three of that over. Wow. So suddenly 73 for four in the 16th over. How how much are you also, sorry, well, how much are, are, are you as captain? So Nick Taylor sitting in the pavilion as he has done for a long while today. How much is he relying on the batsman coming back in? I mean, he'll know himself. He's been out there, albeit not for very long, to give the bowlers information on what to do in the second innings because that opening power play now for Cambridge, for Oxford, sorry, Cambridge bowling in the second innings is going to be crucial. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be absolutely crucial. I think I think, you know, the, the outgoing batsmen are going to be, you know, they're going to have a much better idea of how the wicket is, is playing than we are here. And I think we can see it's slow, we can see it's hard to time. But, you know, how much of that is down to, to good bowling from Oxford and how much is, of, of, of that is down to the wicket itself and, and how much is, you know, bad batting as well because, you know, watching it, it, it doesn't look like 73. Um, well, your side has, has played on this today already. We'll get more reaction from you on... Cambridge University women's defeat to Oxford today in the in the interval with yourself and Joy Lisney, the skipper as well, and Julian Clover. But we've still got four overs to go here at Fenners of the first innings. And it's seam again now. Good length ball and hit straight down the ground by Darrell Well. Oh, and there's a shot that Sumsey went for the quick single, just trying to buy every single run they can. And it didn't look like Darrell Well was in then. No. And that looks like the one that he probably was looking to take over over mid-off, wasn't it? And that's the one person who isn't in the circle. Sorry, who's, who is inside the circle. Yeah, Will Barker back on to bowl for Oxford. I think he's just going to look to go very full, judging from this field. Earlier on, he bowled in the power play and looked to mix it up with a few back-of-a-length balls and also the Yorker balls and the block. Oh, oh, and I think it's Alex Moen there looking to go over over the infield and uh, so just clipped his inside edge of his bat onto his pad, nearly trickled back onto the stumps as well. He survives. Oohs and ahs from the Oxford fielders there. And normally you would do from the spectators, but unfortunately none in today other than the players. It's a behind closed doors match here at Fenners. In maybe, maybe a few spectators who've donned uh, <laughs> Cambridge cricket kind of kit. kit. <laughs> Barker and again. It's a good length ball hit into the leg side just for a quick single and they'll get through. So the game is really looking to take every run they can and, and they absolutely need to at this stage of the innings with just what, four overs to go now. And I think they really they need to start hitting those gaps, don't they? Because we've had two in this two in this over, which they managed to hit straight to the fielders in the ring. So Will Barker at the top of his run again now. As he comes in, right arm over the wicket, full length again, hit away from Darawal, straight to the man at a sort of real shortish cover. And again, he's kind of, you know, there's a fail to, to, to break that offside ring. And this is not what Cambridge need at this point. They need they need a boundary from this over. So what are they thinking total, a certain target, a total, or are they just thinking, look, we need boundaries almost every ball now? 
I think at this point they'll, they'll still have a target in the back of their mind, but but I think they're looking to you know, get as many as possible. Barker and again, oh, that was a slow ball, it looked like, and just seemed to trick Darrell well, but he's managed to chip it into the leg side and over the fielder who was in close and come back for two. You know, I think I think I said before. I think it's 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 hard to tell, uh, batting first in a wicket like this. What is a what is a pass score? You're probably looking when you when before you, before you face the ball. You're probably looking 150, 160, and obviously that's gonna that's gonna change quite a lot, um, especially after the power play. For sure. Will Barker coming in now? Right, I'm over. Oh, swing and a miss outside off stump from Jovan Darawal. And and to be honest, today Will, we've seen a mixed bag of scores. The Reserve men's team earlier, Oxford just getting 75 and Cambridge side just about well, 30 chasing 35, 35 for five at one point, Ex chasing 75. Exactly, and then and then you know the Oxford women's side, the Cambridge women's side, generally going pretty well with the bat. But well, um, I mean, yeah, exactly. It's from 75 in the in the first innings to 146, I think the Oxford girls made in in uh, Oxford women made in in their first innings. The yeah. Uh, uh, the old curse of the the two number seven shirts has uh, has played its tricks on us, I believe. As uh, Ed Hyde is the man at the crease with number seven on his back, serves Darrow well right for not ordering the shirts when the order came in earlier in the season. I was about to say that. Um, Just uh, didn't look like Darrow at the crease. <laughs> You think out of anyone, I've interviewed Ed Hyde probably more than any other cricketer in the county over the last year as well. You think out of, I must recognise him. Does that, does that not say number like five him. on his on his shirt? Or were we going the other end? No, Ed Hyde facing okay, now with number seven on his now. shirt. And, and Moen just coming through for the single there with five on his back. If you're watching on the, the live stream, if you're listening on the radio, that seems pretty irrelevant to you. Oh, Ed Hyde just sweeping there and it's fine. It's gone very fine. It's not going to run away to the boundary though. And Ed Hyde sprints back for two. Freddie Foster, the man bowling from the Gresham Road end here at Fenners. Oh, he's done fantastically coming back here, hasn't he? It's uh, we talk about captain's innings, but but as kind of as a, as a captain's performance, bowling left arm has been bowling the power play with only two men back, and, and now coming back. Yeah, it's been really crucial for Oxford. He's in again now, and, and Hyde sweeps away oh, he's to the leg side, he? and it's gone for four. It's a lovely shot. It was kind of a heart and mouth shot as it kind of floated somewhere near to, to deep mid wicket, but, but just crept over and into the gap. Yeah, split the field as it deep mid, deep mid wicket and uh, long on in the end. And it's a much needed boundary for Cambridge. 82 for four. I'm trying to think when the last boundary actually was. In the 18th. Freddie Foster in again now, left arm, orthodox spinner. Oh, I just plays this one into the offside, comes through for a quick single. And if anyone is going to try and take the attack to Oxford, it would be Ed Hyde. He's been in fantastic form this season, both for his club side, Histon, and the university side. Foster in again. And the sweep's the way to go again. This time from Moen into the leg side, and it's just a single. Good fielding from Owen Marshall in the Oxford dark blue jersey. Yeah, what a brilliant spell this has been from, from Freddie Foster, really. Again, oh, hard using his feet and uh, squirted down to long on. They're going to sprint back for a couple and the batsmen get home. Yeah, they've done well there, haven't they? I'm a slight miss here, but it, I think it's showing you that that one that isn't hit quite as well is actually the one you can push to. Haven't quite got this updated. <laughs> 85 for four, according to the. Got a couple of stream you've got over there. Scorecards in front of us, yeah. Head to Cambridge 105 Radio's YouTube page to watch the the action. So 12 balls left. You must be looking for at least 110, right? Another yeah, so two ball from here. 85 for four, Cambridge are with just a couple of overs left. Just trying to work out how I can refresh this and so see what <laughs> the Foster's bowling figures are. Four overs, one for 21. you take those, wouldn't you, at the beginning of the game? Yeah, you really would. You really would. Brilliant from the the stand-in skipper. Barker's in again for Oxford from the pavilion end. 
and Cambridge looking to come back for two. It's going to be tight again, but good running. Moen gets back. And all these runs are important, really, for Cambridge. But the old adage, it always goes fine at the death. Well, with the pace on the ball of the seam or of Will Barker, Oxford have got both men at fine leg and third man. Third man. But as I say that, Duxbury at third man has been asked to come back up into the ring. And the man at mid-wicket has gone back on the fence to deep mid-wicket. In front of the entrance to the ground on Mortimer Road. Barker in again now. Oh, that's an inventive shot from Moe, and he's given. He looked to reverse sweep the pace of Will Barker, and it hit him by the looks of things. Bang in front, and he's out LBW. It's, that's kind of almost the definition of falling into a trap, isn't it? You know, <laughs> bring third man up. And the batsman fell straight into it. I think that's about the seventh or eighth reverse sweep we've seen attempted today. I'm not sure I've actually seen one um, hit, hit anywhere near the middle of the bat yet. Yeah, the sweep has been an option the Cambridge Batsmen have looked to use fairly regularly. They have not with a huge amount of success, though, unfortunately. But I think you can tell from, from the field that, that Oxford said at the moment that they're very much looking to, to encourage the, the, the Cambridge uh, Batsmen to, to go over the offside or through the offside. And I think when it is a bit of a slower wicket, getting your hands through that ball outside off stump is, is obviously more challenging than when it's really coming in or coming onto the bat. It's Alex Moe in the man to depart. He joins in the shed already today. Nick Taylor out for five, bowled by Freddie Foster. Huyon then was bowled for Nort, also by Fisher. Darrell out, bowled by Marshall, caught by Foster for 24 off 37. And Aaron Amin out for 22 off 21. Bold Mingard caught Duxbury. And uh, Alex Moen has just departed as, as well. Amon being the only only batsman thus far to to really look like he had any ability to get to grips with, with the slightly slow wicket. Everyone else has just looked as if they've just struggled to time it slightly. Murderer Senayeka to come in next, wearing the number six for Cambridge University. Ten St John's College, averaging 27 with the bat this season, so it might just be what Cambridge need it at this time. With what just an over and a, a bit to go now, Cambridge move on to 90 for five. Not sure it's quite the time you'd, you'd hope to come in to, to bat in <laughs> a varsity game. The Will Barker for Oxford coming in now. Right arm around to the left hand is and he's bowled him. He's bowled him first ball. And it looked a cracking delivery from here. And Barker's on a hat trick. It looked like a cracking de delivery, didn't it? Around the wicket, nice and full. Yeah, the, the batsman almost on a yeah, lost cause. Well, not necessarily lost cause, but you know, it's a kind of a hiding for nothing at this point in, in the innings, isn't it? And yeah, it's either. Hit it over the ropes or get out. It's uh, a tricky one for an incoming batsman to do. Yeah. So Cambridge struggling to get up over the uh, the three-figure mark at the minute, 90 for six. They'll certainly want to do that. And if they want to get anywhere near Will Dobson's ideal target of 110, they'll need to try and kick on a little bit in the, the, the last over and a couple of balls here. Well, I think you know the, the problem with getting less than 120 is it it just almost becomes a net scenario where you can just push it around, want a ball, and 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 there's, and, there's, and there's very little pressure. Whereas suddenly, when you start creeping up to you know having to score more than a run a ball, then that suddenly does become or does require some kind of proactiveness on on behalf of of, of the batsman. So the new batsman for Cambridge joins Ed Hyde at the crease. And it looks like it's uh, Sam Turner with 61 on his back from Downing College. First received a blue back in 2018. Of course, you don't receive one for playing in the T20 fixture, just the 50-over match at Lords and the four-day fixture. But comes Barker again. Now on a hat-trick. 
oh, and his hands went on his head, but it's been <laughs> squirted down to fine leg. And I think that's one you'd appeal for, regardless of whether or not you think it's missing leg stump, I'm isn't it? I'm surprised he didn't. <laughs> surprised he didn't. The fact the batsman's halfway down the wicket and... Uh, <laughs> he cares. Then you get everyone up screaming. <laughs> so Hyde back on strike now, which is the batsman Cambridge will want on strike. There's no doubt about that. But he's probably looking to get back on strike again, isn't he? Of course. So I think they'll be looking for one here. Make sure he faces as much of the last over as possible. In comes Barker then to bowl to Hyde. Length Ooh. ball almost sort of swept off a good length into the leg side. And they're going to come back for two, just plugged in the field. It's and kind of the classic pitching wedge, isn't it? <laughs> a little bit of backswing as it, a backspin as it came down. And Ed Hyde managed to pick up two. There is still a ball to come here in this over for Barker. And it's difficult to pick out individuals for Oxford today. They're, the whole bowling unit can be really pleased with the, the work so far. But as the old saying goes, you never know what a good score is until both teams are batted. And Barker comes on, oh, upside off stump. And Hyde flails a bat at it, but can't get anywhere near it. It goes straight through to the keeper. That's the end of the over. And another fantastic over, isn't it? I think that's what Oxford's done fantastically well, is every time they've needed to bowl a fantastic over, they've bowled a fantastic over. And at no point have they let Cambridge sort of get themselves back into to the game. But of course, as you say, you know, it's an old wicket and Oxford still need to bat on it. Yeah, you just get the feeling that that opening power play, maybe not even that, the opening couple of overs or three would be crucial, isn't it? really important for Cambridge. You can even see in the stream now on our YouTube channel, which Cambridge 105 Radio, that the bowlers are doing their warm-ups already on the outskirts of the, the boundary. Well, they're going to have to go super, super hard, aren't they? Yeah, 93 for six are Cambridge after... 19 over, so we're at the final over here of this opening innings as Ben Fisher for Oxford comes in and bowls. Oh, that is inventive. What a shot that is. What a shot. I think it's Sam Turner, and he's just taken a ball off a good length and flicked it over a short fine leg. It's the sort of shot that we're so used to seeing now from players in the T20 Blast and in England colours and T20 cricket or even the IPL around the world. It's extraordinary, isn't it? You know, what people are prepared to do now that they weren't prepared to do five, ten years ago. What a shot that is. So, Turner looking to perhaps turn the screw in Cambridge's favour. Here he advances and slashes at one outside. Off stump, straight through to the keeper. But there is really no other option now. It's, it's do or die for Cambridge. Go hard or go home, as they say. And I think he's probably looking to target this big gap at mid-wicket. Got a man at fine leg, a man at square leg by the looks of things. Although it can be hard to tell who's a, who's a fielder and who's a spectator. <laughs> oh, oh, he's, he's done, it, done again. it again. But there's a man down at fine leg and he's caught it. This time on the full, Turner came forward, almost took it off his... Well, he put his head right by down <laughs> on his feet and, and, and yeah. took a full ball off the bat, flew down to fine leg and it's caught. It's and a, a lovely little cameo from Sam Turner has come to the end. At least he entertained us. Kind of an absolutely extraordinary shot, wasn't it? I mean, he, he couldn't have played that shot much better. No. Um, At one point, I didn't know if he was going to head it or, uh, <laughs> or use his bat. I, I think he probably hadn't quite realised that a fine leg had actually gone back, back on the fence after the first one he played. Or maybe he just wanted to show off how, how adept he was at playing <laughs> that shot and didn't really care about the results. If that's his shot, then... I think mean, he hit that one. He hit that one much better than he hit the first mm. one, didn't he? Yeah, that, I mean, had the fielder not been there, easy to say, but it looked like it was sailing it all the way over six, the ropes for six. Yeah. yeah, he's hit that absolutely fantastically. Kind of shot you hit in the nets, and you uh, and you, you feel great about it. Well, I don't. I don't, oh, I don't. <laughs> one, one might hit in the nets <laughs> and and shout six oh, afterwards. I wish I will. I <laughs> wish maybe Nathan could provide some insight on that. I don't know or joy, but I'm, I'm always I'm always concerned. Wonder how how one practices that. For the first time, without risking um, getting being seriously, hit in the face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it takes some gall, doesn't it, get down on one knee when someone's bowling 80 miles an hour. True. Just a shot of Nick Taylor there in the background, laughing away. Look, looks fairly relaxed. Fisher into bowl again, and just squirted away to a man just out on the the offside. Very fine. It's run through for a single. So, so. Is it Ed, two to come or one to come? Ed Hyde not on, on strike. 
and the incoming batsman following Sam Turner's brief cameo is James Vitale, Christ College. I think Ed's pretty going to be slightly disappointed of how little of this last over he's actually got to face. Mm. He took the two, didn't he? The last ball of the last over, and he's faced the consequences. So Vitali just squirts that through to the man at short for man and run through for a single. It looks like this will be the last over of the opening innings. Ed Hyde on strike. 95 for seven. Can Cambridge get to three figures? Be a lovely way to finish, wouldn't it? <laughs> it would be a nice way to finish. As fine leg wanders back to avoid that same shot we've seen previously. But uh, mid-wicket needs to come in to, to make amends. So he's going to look to hit straight here, isn't he? He's going to look to go mid-wicket. Yeah. Anyway, Fisher into bowl. Last ball of the Cambridge innings. Ed Hyde slaps it straight down the ground. And it looked like he didn't catch all of it, really, because it just ran through. And they ran a quick... And, and had to come back for a second, and somehow <laughs> James Vitali has survived there. <laughs> the bowl let it run past the stumps, thinking it was going to clip them on the way through. But it's like a rogue decision to uh, to watch, try and watch it hit the hit the stumps rather than actually catch the ball himself. There was us looking to see if the ball was going to fly away for four, and you would have seen in our live stream that James Vitali was close to being run out. But that is the end of the Oxford innings, it's like ninety-seven for seven off the twenty. Sorry, Cambridge innings. And uh, they won't be best too pleased with, with that. Oxford will be very pleased with their efforts. Bowled really nicely up top, took a number of crucial wickets and really put the squeeze on. Cambridge will be disappointed they didn't get up to three figures. But it's still all to play for. We don't know yet what a, a good score really is on this wicket. There's been plenty of variety in that department on this pitch throughout the day. But uh, Cambridge will be hoping, hoping that that score is enough and they can defend it and clinch the T20 men's varsity. Thanks very much, uh, Ollie. We're going to be back uh, with Ollie and also chatting to uh, Will Dobson a little bit more, uh, the Cambridge University women assistant coach, and also Joy Lisney is here, the women's captain. So we'll chat with uh, both of them about the earlier uh, women's match. But I guess we kind of have to hope for a low-scoring thriller here. So Cambridge not able to uh, get to a century between them. Uh, we'll come back. We'll talk a little bit more about uh, this match and the other university cricket that has taken place here at Fenners today. Uh, first, though, let's get the latest news headlines. On your radio, on your phone and here. Play Cambridge 105 Radio. This is Cambridge 105 Radio. From the Cambridge News Desk, I'm Tony Barnfield. Government scientists are keeping a close eye on the coronavirus variant first identified in India. Four people have died with it in the UK, and health officials say that the variant has been detected in Cambridge. Dr David Edwards of Public Health England East says that the contacts and movements of confirmed positive cases have been robustly traced and advised to self-isolate. We're told there could be mass vaccinations similar to surge testing in parts of England where the variant first identified in India is spreading. The government's latest plans to tackle it are expected to be announced in a news conference shortly. Portugal has confirmed that tourists from the UK will be able to travel to the country from Monday. It says anyone arriving must have had a negative coronavirus test result. Although on the green list, the Portuguese government has extended its coronavirus state of calamity. Professor Mary Beard is to pay for the living costs of two classics undergraduates from underrepresented groups for the duration of their degree study. Her £80,000 retirement gift has been named the Joyce Reynolds Award after her pioneering classics tutor, now aged 102. You can hear Professor Reynolds in the Cambridge 105 Radio Archive interview on Sunday at 2pm. Palestinian health officials claim six people have been killed by Israeli army fire in the West Bank as protests turn violent. It follows an escalation of the recent fighting between Israel and Hamas in the Gaza Strip. Journalist Martin Bashir is leaving the BBC. His departure comes after questions were raised about how he secured an interview with Princess Diana for Panorama in 1995. And Prince Charles has again ignored questions after his son, the Duke of Sussex, appeared to criticise his parenting in a podcast. Harry says he was left with genetic pain and suffering and doesn't want the same for his children. And that's the latest from Cambridge 105 Radio. Cambridge 105 Radio.
On Sunday afternoons, relax with Jazz Today and Pete Butchers. Join me for music at the cutting edge. Mainly new releases, many on small independent labels. The stuff you rarely get to hear elsewhere. I'll also be keeping a watching brief on jazz events in and around Cambridge, as well as chatting to local and visiting musicians. Jazz Today at the new weekly time of 4pm every Sunday afternoon on Cambridge 105 Radio. Go on, challenge yourself. When retirement starts, that doesn't mean independence stops. At Millview in Hawkston, enjoy independent community living to the full with your own beautiful apartment, a supportive community of friends and care on hand should you need it. Not forgetting fantastic facilities, including rooftop terraces and restaurant. Whether it's for you or a loved one, discover Millview in Hawkston, Cambridge for yourself. Book a private viewing today at mill-view.co.uk. We've all had that moment. Time slows down. Everything goes into slow motion. Our instincts kick in. When your first thought is to go to A&E, stop and think 111 first. Contact 111 and we'll help you right away. If you need urgent care, we'll book you in to be seen quickly and safely. Just think 111 first. You're NHS. Help us help you. What does wealth mean to you? Security, health, choices. Good financial planning can provide the freedom and peace of mind to live life your way. At Schroeder's Personal Wealth, we have an advisor based in Cambridge who can work with you to create your own personal plan. So whatever wealth means to you, we're here to help you feel confident in your financial future. To arrange an initial no-obligation, no-cost conversation with your local advisor, please contact us on 01223 739 790 or visit spw.com. Schroeder's Personal Wealth. Wealth is personal. Eligibility criteria, fees and charges apply. Welcome back uh, to Fenners. Uh, the wheelbarrow carrying the sawdust is uh, disappearing off the pitch at the moment. I think they've done some line painting as well. And the light blues of Cambridge are out there. Quite a bit of work to do uh, when we resume uh, the second innings. Uh, Oxford are uh, going to be batting uh, Cambridge bowling. And oh my goodness, uh, quite a bit of um, hard effort is going to be need, but needed by the Cambridge University team. Uh, with me, I've got uh, Joy Lisney, who is the women's captain, and also Will Dobson, who is the uh, women's assistant coach. Uh, assistant to the coach. Assistant to the coach. <laughs> I'm joking. That's not I, I always get confused. <laughs> it's like it's like when football managers always used to be football managers, and now and now they're head coaches. Where where did that all come from? So, what, what do you both make of? Uh, well, first of all, we'll talk briefly about the uh, the men's game before that resumes in the next ten minutes or so. Um, got a bit of an effort but I guess it's one of these things we've got to see both sides bat before we can make a, a final conclusion. Uh, 100% I think you know we said on commentary that the wicket's definitely slow but I think when you're 10 for 2 in the at the end of the power play then any runs on the board are probably a bonus at that point. Yeah Joy you were out there early on I think what was um, did, did you feel that it was going to be this wicket where you know the, the spin just comes more and more into it as the uh, the match or matches plural because we're on the, th the third one now it goes on Yeah absolutely it was definitely a spinning pitch um Oxford opened their their bowling innings with a with an off spinner um, which I think was a good move and then our, when our, we brought our off spinner on later and she she took a couple of wickets and it it changed the, the game a bit but um yeah, as always, as Will was saying, it's not a it's not a quick wicket. It's not coming onto the bat, so you feel like you have to you have to make it happen. And the the Oxford Openers did that really well in our game. And we we had a, we had a sort of brief spell of sunshine, sort of I think what about over twelve. We sort of the sun came out and then it disappeared, and now we're getting this sort of a chill feel to the air. How, how much effect do the atmospherics have on the uh, on the course of play? Do you think, particularly at this sort of relatively early season? Well, I think in T20 it all it all happens so fast. You sort of you don't necessarily register. Um, the pink ball was swinging um, in both innings, I think, uh, for us. I haven't I haven't seen from the men. What do you think? Well, it's quite unusual when the pink ball swings at all. I think yeah. in terms of atmospheric uh, conditions, 
this is probably the only day that actually the game could have been played in the next week, judging by the weather forecast. So, <laughs> so I guess that's a that's a positive. But it has been a bit cold, hasn't it? Yes, no, and it's not uh, not going to get too much better. Just let's review a little bit uh, the game, the women's game from earlier on. And sorry, apologies to Joy for sort of going through the score. Um, 121 for Cambridge, Oxford 146, and you. You know, unfortunately, it fell short at, at, at the end. Did you, did you feel at, at some point in the game, think, "Oh no, this this one's going. We've we've lost this one." I th I thought that we I thought we actually were going to win until maybe about the 14th, 15th over. It started to hang in the balance, and I think it was actually in the balance until the last three three or four overs. Um, they had a very good over. Um, at one point, they they bowled a couple of really tight overs, and that changed it quite a lot. And I, I think obviously they got the big wicket as well. Mm. And and I think we said at the beginning of the game, if if Emma if Emma Jones is is batting at the twentieth over, we'll win this game. Mm. And she very nearly made she it. She didn't quite did. carry a bat, but sort of heading heading in that direction. Mm. How, how crucial is Emma to to the side? Well, she's she's been really crucial to the side. Um, I think I think we we do actually bat pretty deep as well, though. And I think um, that that she can be most effective in our side with us all playing around her. Um, and us all doing our doing our our kind of part. It's not a case of just one person has to perform, and then then the game's sort of done. Um, although T20 in general can be a bit like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as a as an opening bowler and and a gun bat, she's she's pretty key to our squad. And I think she has the ability to hit the ball incredibly hard, yeah. which which obviously is, is is you know a it's fantastic, but it makes a big difference in women's cricket because mm. she can clear the boundary consistently. Um, and it was just a shame that she couldn't quite see us home today because I think if she'd been there at the end, we would have won and it'd have been a different different feeling right now. <laughs> We've got some more varsity matches uh, coming up, I think, over the next uh, next few weeks. Yeah, absolutely. We are playing our 50 over varsity match at Wormsley on the 28th of June. Um, so that will be spectators will be allowed. So we're looking forward to that a lot. And I think the, the 50 over format will suit our team really well. Um, and we've we've beaten Oxford once this season lost to them once this season so I think that will be the final kind of test we'll see what happens yeah I'm just uh, noting now the uh, uh, Cambridge team are coming out uh, onto the field they're fielding will be starting underway in a few moments the umpires are all already out on the batsman as well in the middle so we'll hand over to our commentary uh, team shortly mm. Chris Jordan is uh, coming in to uh, take up the commentary for the uh, first section of the match. Do you, your own personal preference, Joy, do you prefer the uh, the, the 50 over format or uh, is, it a sort of, is there sort of a buzz of excitement uh, at a T20? I think I do prefer the 50 overs. Um, <laughs> but it, it, the T20 is pretty fun, especially on a ground like this, and if, especially if we did have spectators. But it, I think even with just all the all the squads playing here today, there's quite a lot of good. Atmosphere. I, I was going to say, you look across there, and uh, you've got uh, you, you've got quite a quite an audience in front of the uh, in front of the pavilion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not 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 bad at all. I did struggle to find somewhere to uh, uh, to to put out the bicycle as well. <laughs> Right, Chris, I think I will probably hand across uh, to you uh, shortly to, uh, to to take up uh, uh, the, the commentary here. We'll, we'll stay with you uh, for the next, um, I guess, sort of hour and a quarter, hour and a half uh, through the match. And uh, Cambridge got uh, quite a bit to do. Yeah, thanks, Julian. Um, yeah, they do. Um, uh, they've got uh, they've got their two spinners, so they will be looking to kind of put the squeeze on in the uh, the way that Oxford did, uh, try and not let Oxford get away to a, uh, to a quick start. Uh, I've still got uh, both Joy and Will alongside me. Um, do we know, uh, oh, I'm trying to see who the opening uh, opening batsmen are for Oxford, but we'll report that shortly as we are just the uh, first delivery. Uh, I think it's Salonika and it's uh, played out into the offside, but there's no run. Um, Cambridge 101 for seven, so Oxford chasing 102 to win. And we're thinking this is Oxford in the driving seat, but the next, uh, the first five overs of this are key for for Cambridge. Joy. Yeah, absolutely. I would think we we kind of thought that a par score might, or a winning score might be in the 120s. Um, oh. Ah. And straight away, <laughs> second delivery, <laughs> uh, and uh, something like a strikes. It's a, uh, um, uh, sorry. It's uh, uh, Hargrave who um, 
uh, who Nathan had picked out as a, a key player for Oxford and a uh, second ball. He's uh, uh, kind of uh, b ballooned it to uh, 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 to uh, short cover. I, I didn't really. Sorry, it was a. It was, a, it was just as I'd uh, taken my seat, so I didn't quite see exactly what happened there. But uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's a wicket anyway, and uh, Oxford are uh, none for one after two deliveries of their innings. The batsman at the non-striker's end uh, was Will Wright, who was uh, fielding down down here for large parts of the Cambridge innings. Um, so uh, he could only watch as uh, uh, Oxford lost their first wicket. And uh, we'll wait to see if we can uh, uh, pick out the shirt number of the new Oxford batsman. Um, I don't know, uh, Will, if you can uh, you can catch from, from where you are. I don't think so. But, uh, He's definitely like got a number on his back. <laughs> <laughs> Sam like comes in right arm over the wicket, uh, slightly short and uh, played off the back foot into the offside. Uh, yeah, it's number 36. That's Omar Mohammed, according to uh, the scorecard I have here. We did, we did say that early wicket's going to be crucial. We did, and uh, while mm. I was I was so busy saying it that I didn't notice that early <laughs> wicket actually fell. <laughs> looked suspicious like a bump ball <laughs> from where I was standing. <laughs> Uh, so like it involves, it's a good length and played out into the offside for no run. And uh, it's uh, none for one off four deliveries. And uh, yeah, so like I think I think he went first ball, did he, when he came into bat? Uh, but, he, uh, but he's uh, made a better start with uh, with the ball here. I couldn't have made a much worse start with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, actually. It would have been nice to see him have a go. But, uh, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, so like a bold, uh, bold by Barker first ball uh, when he came in earlier in the innings. Um, uh, yeah, don't forget Cambridge 102, uh, sorry 101 in their in their innings with uh, Darrell top scoring with 24, and uh, so like comes in to complete the over. That's short and it's lashed over, God, over cover point and uh, two bounces to the boundary. I think. That's a, that's a proper shot, isn't it, to to get one ex over extra cover off the back foot on a slow wicket? Yeah, that's really. That's. I don't think we saw. I don't think we saw any boundaries uh, through that area of. The, I'm, I'm saying that thinking I'm probably wrong now, but I don't think we saw. Uh, we saw any boundaries. Certainly, nothing hit through the air in that uh, that uh, part of the ground and uh, in the Cambridge innings. That was uh, quality stuff. Jai is the only person who's actually batted on this wicket. Is it? Is it hard to time? I'd say that it's once you've got your eye in, it's a great wicket to play positively on. But I think I think some of the some of the good length balls are sitting up that little bit more, and it's quite easy to do exactly what the first Oxford bat did, uh, did and just pop it up to the short fielder. So I think they they sort of they were pretty. Pr it was a good plan to bring their medium medium pace on on to to open. So. Uh, Wright is the other opening batsman. Uh, Oxford four for one after the first over. And uh, we wait to see who's going to be bowling for uh, Cambridge. I think that's James Vitali. Uh, quicker than Salonika, I think we'll find. Uh, yeah. And he's left, quite left arm. Yeah, he's quite small. It really skids on. So, yeah, coming from a, a, a lower trajectory, it's left arm... Uh, think he's going to be bowling over the wicket so across the right-handed batsman right have, have you told him personally he's quite small I, I thought that after I said it that he's going to be really annoyed with me for saying that on radio um yeah we'll make sure that leads the podcast uh, when that goes out <laughs> he comes in no slips in place and uh played into the leg side by right confidently um uh, Ironic too, after I'd been told off for um, mentioning the heights of some of our players in our team. So, <laughs> yeah, because you think all of them are five foot one because you're six foot four. <laughs> <laughs> the Vitali uh, running in again and again played into the leg side, but this time finds the gap. Right, uh, I don't know if it's, it's, there's two guys after it and they've just managed to cut it off before it reaches the boundary. They're coming back for a third and it's... Oh, and the keeper hide uh, threw the stumps down and I 
don't think they've given it. I think the batsman must have made his ground, but it was uh, sharp work from Hyde. The, the throw was just a bit far away from the stumps. Yeah, better throw there. I think he was uh, gone by quite some distance. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, uh, it was worked into the leg side. Uh, two Cambridge fielders after it. Uh, they did well to cut it off, but then, yeah, the, the throw was uh, just a bit too far away from the stumps. Hyde did well to uh, gather the throw and then throw the stumps down from a, a couple of yards away. Uh, but by that time, um, Mohammed had made his ground and he now uh, takes guard to face his first ball from Vitali, who bowls and it's left uh, through to the keeper and there's no run there. The quick look back there from Vitali to make sure the umbar hadn't stretched his arms. Mm. <laughs> I think that was pretty right on the limit of... Uh of whether it was a wide. Of whether it was a wide or not. Uh, yeah. There was definitely a puff of dust on where that ball pitched. <laughs> so. so Vitali maybe got away with one there, but he nonetheless comes in again and bowls. And it's a slow, fuller one. And uh, it's through, it's beaten the batsman uh, and Hyde takes it well. Did um, did Vitali get a nine for in one of the varsity games at some point? Or am I making that up? Uh, I don't know. Nathan is saying 10. The four day game got 10 fair. So Cambridge would obviously take that again. Well, we can't get 10. <laughs> but Oxford. They would probably take five here. <laughs> <laughs> Vitali sprints in, and again, it's left outside the off stump through to Hyde, and no run. And this is a, this is a decent start for Cambridge. Uh, they've not um, let the game uh, get away from them early there's obviously a long way to go but uh, uh just the one boundary and uh, uh, a couple of singles and we are just about to see the completion of the second over as vitali uh, comes in left arm o over the wicket across the right-handed batsman he tries to uh, uh, kind of uh, paddle it into the leg side but misses it and through to the keeper and there's no run and i believe that's oxford at six for one from two overs I think they probably need at least one more wicket in this power play, don't they? Otherwise, uh, it's going to be tough for Cambridge. Yeah, Oxford uh, kind of bothered about the uh, trying to take advantage of the fielding restrictions in the power play, or with a target of 102, are they just going to just going to bat sensibly? And well, I think we saw in the first game when it was the Cambridge were chasing 75 that they did try and take advantage and end up being 35 for five, which is probably <laughs> the wrong the wrong way to do it. And actually, suddenly then almost using using it as a net and just knocking it around is, is probably the way to go. Mm. Yeah, it's not an it's not the easiest pitch to bat on, but 102 should be well within their remit unless they, like you say, will lose a few early wickets. Uh, this one, it's worked into the uh, leg side off the bowling of Selenica and Oxford uh, right takes the single to leave Mohammed on strike. It, it does become hard defending these low totals doesn't it because you've got so little margin for error if a, you know the, the team batting second doesn't have to take any risks and they can just knock it around ones and twos and, and they'll win the game uh, this Ooh. time he's <laughs> gone for the uh, drive in the air and that is very very nice indeed uh, it was a full ball slightly outside the off stump and uh, Mohammed uh, quite rightly threw the bat at it and uh, drove it over uh, the covers and out to the out to the cover boundary. Well, just as I was saying, knock it around for ones and twos, <laughs> and someone <laughs> launches it over extra cover. It's the second time he's managed to hit the ball over over the infield, isn't it? On the offside, hmm. suddenly looking a slightly different wicket. So like it in again and balls shorter this time, and it's uh, played nicely down towards the third man, and they take the single. Getting a little bit chilly here at Fenners. It's uh, just reached six o'clock uh, here. You're listening to Cambridge 105 Radio. Uh, I'm Chris Stewart and uh, Ollie Searle as well and Julian Clover. As, as Selenica comes in to bowl, it's uh, full length and lofted over the, uh, the infield again and runs away to uh, the kind of wide long on boundary for another four for Oxford and... Uh, they, uh, yeah, they really weren't listening to you well, at the beginning of the over, <laughs> were they? Well, or you when you said <laughs> that, that uh, Cambridge did a good job in making sure that they didn't get away from uh, 
I'm beginning to think they're not listening <laughs> to any of us. <laughs> is, is anyone listening to any of us? I mean, that's the question, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget, you can also, uh, if, if you're if you're listening and you'd actually like to watch, uh, we've got a live stream uh, going through the website as well. Um, as sunlight comes into a bowl and it's... Uh, Oh, my view is obstructed by a couple of uh, a couple of spectators on the boundary, but uh, there is no run. Anyway, <laughs> move the fielders. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Senanaika comes into bolt again for Cambridge University, and it's uh, driven into the on the offside, but no run. And as I was saying. Uh, the uh, urban, well, I was going to say, as I was saying, uh, Johnny Five and Urban Baseline Show is uh, due to start at seven, uh, but we will, of course, stay with this match to its conclusion uh, and then go straight over to Johnny Five as soon as we're complete here. And we'll see how we get on. Um, at the moment, Oxford will be uh, looking to finish things off before the full 20 overs but see if Cambridge can turn things around here Senanaika bowls and it's uh, uh, really well fielded actually there uh, in the covers uh, and they limit it to just the single and that's the end of the over uh, three gone and uh, Oxford uh, yeah just uh, pushing on a bit there after um, just the one boundary in the first couple of overs. As it as it's just past six o'clock, I might go and see if the pubs have opened <laughs> 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 to drown my sorrows after our defeat earlier on today, <laughs> um, and leave you with joy if that's a okay. game. Absolutely, will. But uh, thank you very much for having me on the radio. <laughs> no, really appreciate you joining us, Will. Thanks a lot. And uh, uh, yeah, c commiserations that the that the match this afternoon didn't quite go your way. Maybe this one will turn around. See, as Vitali comes into bowl, his second over, uh, it's uh, a good length ball and play down to the covers with no run. Joy, we were saying earlier you batted on this this earlier on. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of? Uh, I guess we, we've uh, we touched on this earlier, but uh, the two Oxford batsmen, uh, they're just gonna uh, just gonna. Uh, try and bat and, and attack the loose deliveries and try and make sure that if they can... Oh, sorry, as the ball comes in, he's attacked that one. Oh, is that caught? I don't think it is. No, it was. Uh, it, it didn't carry to the field. Uh, I think it might have been a bump ball, actually, but uh, it was very uh, solidly driven, but uh, very well stopped by the field uh, uh, in the covers. Um, we were saying before that they might just kind of... Uh, Trying to try and bat through, bat sensibly, but they've uh, a couple of attacking shots in the last over. If they can, if they can get ahead of the rate early, then it should they should be able to win at a canter. So is that kind of what they're thinking? As uh, Wright plays this one uh, through down to final leg, it's cut off just for the boundary, and they take another two runs. They're just going to carry on playing, aren't they, Joy? And uh, 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 at this run rate, it sh uh, they'll be thinking at the moment it's fairly comfortable. Oh yeah, absolutely. I don't think they they don't need to feel like they have to take any risks at this point. Um, Cambridge need to be careful just not to bowl. You know that fuller ball is going to go is going to go straight over. I think um, so. They just need to keep hitting their lengths. Um, Vitali move. He's coming. He's coming round now. So they're moving the sight screen. I think. Yeah, they're moving the side screen. Yeah. So Vitali is coming round the wicket. Vitali mm. left arm, uh, quick, bowling to the right-handed uh, right, and it's uh, fairly full. And right smashes this over the covers for four runs. And uh, yeah, attacking yeah. intent again from right. It's been a uh, he's uh, he's looked very impressive in the f in the mm. first three or four overs, hasn't he? Yeah, very impressive. And that's exactly what what I'm talking about. If you if you bowl really full, the wicket's not going to do very much. Um, so the, the batters can just um, be really positive and hit it hit it straight, and that's what we actually saw um, one of the Oxford openers doing so much in our game. Um, she hit some really fantastic shots straight down the ground off the balls mm. that were just too full. Well, we expect to see some spin from Cambridge pretty soon. As uh, oh, and that's as edged. It's a false shot. It would have uh, would have. Gone right down the throat of the first slip, but it's uh, uh, there's no no slips in, and that's run 
down to the boundary for another four runs for Oxford. Spin soon, do we think? I would think they'll bring their spinners on. Um, I I think they'll keep... Uh, who, who is the opening bowler at this end? The sort of medium pacer. I think they'll keep him on. Sananaka, They've got yeah. um, uh, Jan, uh, num- number three, the fast bowler, um, sort of waiting in the wings. I don't know if they'll, yeah, they'll Jan bring Krosinesti. him on to just break up the rhythm a bit. Um, but no, I think there's... I, I think there's definitely a good argument for bringing the spinners on. Yeah, we saw Oxford had three spinners uh, and opened with one, in fact, uh, mm. with some success. Yeah. Uh, Cambridge just going for the two, which Nathan was saying earlier on, he w- he thought maybe they could have gone for the three spinners as well. But mm. uh, And at the moment, it's always easy to say after the event, um, Oxford will feel that they absolutely made the right decision to, to play the extra spinner. And... What I, I didn't, I only caught the last uh, the last seven or eight overs of your game. Was the bowling success through spin or seam or a bit of both? They they did open with a spinner at one end, mm-hmm. and they opened also with their sort of more medium pace bowlers. They brought on their their faster bowler a little bit later, and um, I haven't got the stats, but I think she actually probably got hit for slightly more runs mm-hmm. than the slower bowlers. Um, I think it was probably a good move. Um, we kind of mixed ours up. Uh, throughout the game but I, I imagine the wicket is turning more and more as it gets played on so mm-hmm. it looks like uh we are going to have some spin i think aaron amin uh who hit a couple of lusty blows with the bat um is going to bowl the fifth over uh from here the gresham road end yeah number 16 that is aaron amin mm-hmm. so it's right arm uh round the wicket uh bowling to the right hander and Kind of a stifled appeal uh, as uh, Mohammed played a forward defensive, pushing it into the offside, potentially pad first. But we, uh, uh, but the the ump- well, if the umpire agreed it was pad first, he didn't agree that it was in line. But uh, as Aaron Amir comes in again, and this one goes for the sweep and uh, misses it, but misses the keeper as well, and they scamper through for a single, or, uh, for a wide, in fact. The umpire signals wide, so uh, two more runs to the Oxford total. And it will be right on strike to face his first delivery of spin. Hide up to the stumps, of course, the wicket keeper. And Aaron Amin just hesitating, but now bowling off about three or four paces. He's in round the wicket and bowls and uh, Wright, who's been uh, on good form, plays it uh, square on the leg side, but it's uh, cut off on the boundary and it's just the single to uh, to Oxford there. Cambridge, as Amin comes in again and uh, again goes, goes to hit that boundary. This time he's got there. Um, the fielder is signalling four. I think it must have just bounced before the rope. Uh, but that was a uh, that was a really nicely played shot, Joy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if that was if that was only very very just a four, wasn't it? I mean, it was. Yeah. It looks that like that's that looks like his hitting zone. Um. Yeah, absolutely. I and mean, he's hit some. <coughs> uh, he's hit three or four in the air now, Mohammed. Uh, no, none of them, you know, none of them close, none of them that close to a fielder. They've all been uh, g- uh, genuine shots, mm. and uh, uh, both he and Wright have uh, looked really good so far uh, as they start this uh, this run chase. 102 they were uh, chasing to win, of course. Uh, as that one, I'm not even going to try and describe that one. That's a slight. That one sort of stuck through. One. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Amin comes in again round the wicket and uh, this time it's left and oh, it's given a wide down the leg side. It's, uh, I guess anything down the leg side is tends to be given a wide in, in T20 cricket. So Amin comes in again and it's uh, swept, oh, kind of pull swept very nicely uh, backward of square on the leg side and yet another four uh, for Oxford. And uh, we're... Um, uh, uh, we're very privileged to be uh, here commenting, uh, commentating on the uh, the Varsity T20 uh, for Cambridge 105 Radio, but sadly it's uh, not going Cambridge University's way 
uh, at all at the moment and it's a, a really impressive uh, uh, start from Oxford chasing 102 to win this match. Um, one more over and then we'll bring Ollie Searle back in to the commentary team. Let's just wait to see uh, who's going to be bowling this one. I think it's still... Is that Alex Moeen? Might well be Alex Moeen. Looking around the field, I can't see him anywhere else. <laughs> that's, the, that's the most likely reason it's him. Um, <laughs> well, if you know what he looks like, that also helps. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, it looks like it is Alex Moen, uh, batted at five and now coming in. Yeah, he bowl, he's bowl. been really effective, taking a lot of wickets this season. Um, he really puts it on the spot. <coughs> That's what you need in the middle overs of uh, a one day innings. And yeah, that's quick as well, uh, but it's beaten the keeper and uh, it's fielded just on the boundary, just cut off uh, before it reached the boundary. Couple more runs uh, to Oxford there. Oh, well, three more runs because it was a wide as well. So it puts it on the spot, but not yeah. just, <laughs> just, that, just that one time, not quite the right spot. Um, this that's much better, uh, just short of a length, but it's worked out into the uh, into the offside by by right, and they jog through four. The single. Yeah, getting a bit chilly here, but we've been lucky with the weather, really, so we can't complain. I, uh, I was uh, I was sat at home this time yesterday, wondering if the game would even go ahead because of the rain. But uh, uh, we've managed to get three games in today. Uh, were you uh, getting a bit concerned this time yesterday? Did yeah, you? we we were we were here at Fenners on Tuesday playing the MCC, and unfortunately, we only got through fourteen overs before the whole thing yeah. was rained off, and the 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 wicket and the whole square was completely flooded almost. So. Um, the the whole day was in doubt, so we're really pleased that we could that it's the the forecast has been a lot better than expected. Yeah, it's been great to get three uh, three full matches in. Mm. Uh, well, I say I shouldn't count our chickens, but it l looks overhead. I don't, the the clouds don't look that dark, so I think we're just I think we're just about going to be okay. Mm. Uh, Mo and bowling quickly, but hide up to the stumps, uh, the wicket keeper, as. Uh, Mohammed try carves this one away behind square for four more. That's just uh, a little bit short and wide for a Moen. And uh, uh, Mohammed helped himself. Mm. That's still uh, yeah, one or two more yeah. balls in this over from Alex Moen. And then I'll hand back over to Ollie Searle to continue the commentary. As Moen comes in again, right arm over, and Bowles and Mohammed forward, defensive. Very nicely done all round. Good cricket all round, as they say. <laughs> so, Alex Moen to complete this over. Before, like I say, I'll hand back over to Ollie Slack. Uh, Moen in, and he bowls, and it's uh, worked away behind square on the leg side for a single to, I was going to say, on the over. I think that's right. Yes, it is the end of the over. And you're listening to Cambridge 105 uh, live from Fenners for the Varsity 220 between Cambridge and Oxford University. Uh, Cambridge scored 101 for seven uh, from their 20 overs. And there was one delivery left in the over, and it's been dispatched for four. Uh, and uh, Ollie, very shortly, once our live scorecard is updated, will give you uh, the Oxford score. But they are well on course uh, to uh, uh, knock off these uh, 102 runs that they need for victory uh, after the first six overs of their innings.
Yeah, thank you, Chris. And Joy, I think you're heading off. Now, thanks very much for, for joining us this afternoon. When will we next be seeing Cambridge University women in action? Uh, we're playing against the Army at Fenners on Tuesday, weather depending. So <laughs> hopefully the forecast is is uh is not <laughs> is not correct <laughs> yeah let, let's hope it's <laughs> hope it i hope it's pretty good and the next varsity match for yourselves uh the 28th of june at wormsley so yeah we've got six weeks to prepare for that um and get back into some more sort of red ball cricket yeah well all the best all the best with that and commiserations this afternoon thanks very much for joining us once again thanks for having me joy listening the cambridge university women's skipper there joining us on commentary here at fenners for the men's T20 varsity match between Cambridge and Oxford. Nathan Johns will be joining me in just a little bit. We're a couple of balls in here from Aaron Amins over. Oxford 50 for one after six. And uh, a considerably, considerably better power play for the Dark Blues and the Light Blues. More on that in a, bit, in a minute. I mean, in and bowls, full ball and Oxfordshire batsman couldn't quite get it away. So if I remember correctly, the Cambridge power play was, was it 10 for two off six? Nathan? I think looking back on it, I think, you know, if this game goes the way it, it's looking like it's going to, um, I think that will be the, the main point made in the changing room afterwards. Um, you know, the power play is something that our coach, Paul Hutchinson, has, has put a big emphasis on um, this season. And we've done quite a good job of it actually in 50 over cricket. But today, uh, it just, I think ultimately that's, you can't really score 10 runs or six overs with only two fielders up, and that's that's going to be the difference, it looks like. A dot for Amin to finish the over by the looks of things. The two Oxford batsmen at the crease are Tom Noda and uh, Omar Mohammed as well. Yeah, Omar's really come on. I remember playing against him a few years ago in the second team varsity, and uh, I think he batted a good bit lower down the order. And... Uh, Put it this way, he, he he wasn't hitting it as cleanly as he is now, and now here he's here at the Blues level, and he's he's hit a few very nicely today. So uh, he's somebody who's definitely been working hard at his cricket over the last few years. Yeah, it looks like Oxford are going to wrap this one up with many overs to spare. We'll bring you the conclusion of the match though until it's finished. Who knows? Cambridge could fight back, and a couple of wickets always adds a bit of pressure. Pressure. They're going to need a few, though, if they're going this to try and put any pressure on Oxford. Well, here comes here comes Jan Krosimirski um, to bowl. He's going to try and do just that. Comes in now. Full ball hit towards. Looked pretty straight and a good deflection off of the bowler or the batsman's boot and deflected to mid off. No run. Hit that cleanly, didn't he? Down the ground. Did uh, the Tom Nodder. Probably a bit full from from Jan. He'd be looking to bowl a little bit more into the pitch. Jan Krosomirski into bowl then from the pavilion end. Tom Noda facing right arm. Oh, and cuts away off the bottom outside, inside edge of the bat and down to fine leg for a single. There we go. There's that length into the pitch. Just there's some, a little bit of something in it for the bowlers. Jan maybe might have done, tried to try to do something with the seam position there as the ball just jagged in off a length and uh, went down to fine leg off via the inside edge. I think that's, that's how he's going to get his wickets here. Is, it's difficult to hit off that length, and as we just saw, you know, an inside edge like that can very easily go back onto the stumps. Jan Krosomirski in again now to the stumps, and he's just pulled out of that delivery. Maybe a slight chink in his run-up. Maybe didn't feel quite right coming up to the bowl. The umpire signals back to the score as it's a dead ball. Ollie Slack with you and Nathan Johns at Fenners for the conclusion of this men's T20 varsity match between Cambridge and Oxford. Cross Samirski and bowls. Just good length ball played into the offside. No run. Yeah, Omar's been pretty good at hitting hitting width that's full outside off. We saw that one shot off Senanayaka that went absolutely miles over extra cover, but that, mm. not off that length. That's 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 the length you need to be bowling here. So come on then, give us some hope, Nathan. <laughs> Any way back for Cambridge? Yeah, well, there, was, there always is. I mean, we saw in the earlier games how, how wickets fall in clusters, and I think it's, it's one thing that's important to appreciate is it really isn't there as we just see Krasimirski again bowl into the pitch. Another inside edge that trickles through to hide behind the stumps again could have gone anywhere. Those those are those types of deliveries that 
that you know when it's your day they're, they're rolling onto the stumps instead of through to the keeper I mean in the earlier game wickets wickets fell in clusters and it's important to remember just how important it is out there I mean you know it might just seem like a, an Oxford Cambridge game and it's an amateur university game but you know for, for these guys and for the second team players as well this is this is the be all and end all of our season there's a lot of pressure on you know we're playing in front of a crowd even if it is just um the other squads that are playing here today so there's a lot there's a lot on the line here and uh you know the last thing you want is a slow deck that's hard to score off um so you know if jan keeps hitting this pitch hard and gets one of these deliveries to to jag in and and, and you know take 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 the stumps then it's not easy to get started out here so there's definitely hope and you know oxford are only about halfway there halfway through to their target yeah it's pretty simple isn't it for nick taylor he needs wickets and he needs wickets fast just last delivery played into the leg side for a single to Omar Mohammed, in comes Samoski again and Is hits straight there? down the ground. One bounce bouncing into the fielder's hands at long on. That needs to that that's that's the type of shot you know. Jan's bowled a couple of good balls. They've seen that the ball's moving, jagging back in off the pitch to these guys. Nada is thinks he's got a ball he can hit lengthwise, and he it's probably a little bit short of a length to be playing that shot down the ground. And he's nearly picked out Aaron at long on, but. It's just landed short. I mean, those are the types of, of, of balls that, that need to go to hand if, if Cambridge are going to crawl, you know, claw their way back into this one. Yeah, Tom Nodder with 23 on his back and Searle <laughs> taking the captain's jersey. He's actually injured for this match. And uh, looks as though Aaron Amin is starting to bowl again now from the Gresham Road end in a good length ball hit away and that looks like that's going over the rope it is for six that's absolutely massive biggest biggest six of the day a little bit short from Aaron you can tell I think Nodder was just waiting for that length he's sitting back in his crease opens up nicely and and sends it I think they're gonna have to go look at the ball there's some tennis courts next door and it looks <laughs> like that it's been it's been hit into them hopefully there was nobody playing earlier on during the second team game there was actually I remember I was batting we actually had to stop briefly because some tennis balls from the next door court had actually come on to, to, to our side of the boundary. So uh, looks like we've returned the favour there. <laughs> well, just to reminisce of so many village cricketers across the county that even these guys at these levels, has some similarities as a handful of players go and fetch the ball in the, the neighbouring facilities. I mean, again, now it's a good length ball again. and he's six gone again. again. Is it another six? Yes, it is. What a shot that is. Back to back sixes for Oxford and Tom Nutter. Just as big. He's a big man as Tom Nutter. He's got some long arms to use his levers there. And I don't even think he got hold of that, to be honest with you. But uh, it's gone j almost just as far. Full fuller length this time from Aaron. But he's gone for the slog sweep. It looks like Tom's looking to finish this one in a hurry. Yeah, and once again, a couple of Cambridge players go look for the ball. Looking to finish this in a hurry is certainly what Oxford are trying to do. Also clearly aware of our scheduling here at Cambridge 105 Radio for the Urban Baseline show at 7 o'clock. Look, I don't think, you know, it's frustrating that he's gotten hit for 12 here and two balls are, but I don't think he minds not coming after him here because, you know, he's in the game. Um, it's 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 difficult on this pitch to consistently hit through the ball like that. I mean, as we've seen all day, Tom, not to be fair to him, has hit two balls very cleanly there. And I think it looks like there's no luck with the ball. I think somebody's gone off to go get a spare one. Um, <laughs> You know, so Tom's kind of made a mockery of all the other batsmen today who have who have struggled to hit through the line and hit cleanly. Um, but it, it, those shots are difficult to play on this wicket, and Aaron has just got to keep keep trying to hit his area and 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 hope that you know he doesn't get hold of one, and 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 that's the the crucial wicket. I know Cambridge didn't score many boundaries, but it did look like when the spinners came on, that's when they upped the ante a little bit earlier on, and and it looks the case now, albeit as we were saying, there is a, a little bit of turn in there for the spinners. Yeah. I think the bottom line is you, you can't really let spinners settle in a T20 game. Um, you don't want your spinner bowling four overs for 20 as, as Foster did so well um, earlier because you know you need to take advantage of, 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 of the spinners when they come on. If you let them settle, then you know they're more than happy to chew up four overs and that's those 24 deliveries that you've wasted if, if you let the spinner get into his rhythm. Um, it's it, But again, it's difficult. It's, so it's, it's, it's an intriguing battle when no matter what... The, what, no matter what the pitch is, your instinct is to go after him and try to get him out of the attack. But he's he's got a pitch that's helping him. Um, and Oxford have, have played the spinners slightly better um, today. Yeah, Tom Nutter with 42 on his back, in fact, not 23. Clearly, uh, 
not one of these players who's not managed to not order a shirt in time when they're <laughs> they yeah. were doing so early on in the season. Yeah, we've got Joe Van right in front of us at Long Island. He's got Hyde on his back. Yeah. I know that was causing a bit of confusion earlier on. It was. Yeah, thanks for letting me know two overs too late, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I thought you knew Heidi. But I, thought, <laughs> I thought you'd figure that one out pretty quickly. Not that well. Clearly not that well. Uh, yeah, still looking for the ball here at Fenners, I think, or or trying to get a new one at least. Yeah, just a bit of a resigned atmosphere at the moment. Yeah. And the, and the Cambridge players, there's a few of them, you know, come together to have a chat. Um, I think they know that the game's probably up, which is unfortunate. It's, it's, it's never nice to see from the light blue point of view. But they've just got to keep going. Aaron's got to keep bowling into the pitch here, encouraging Nodder to, to try and take him on. And look, if he if he's in this form and he's whacking it everywhere, fair play to him. But you've got to you've got to challenge him to do that. And so far Nodder has been up to that challenge. Dimension to the ground, which is the the areas it, when I was walking around out it looked a, a bit shorter, straighter straighter down the ground as opposed to as opposed to the the size of the ground. It's definitely bigger square, yeah, one hundred percent. Um which is why as a spinner you probably want to ball into the pitch a little bit more and not, not give him not give him the flight where they can use their feet and try and hit straight. Um, you know, it's a pretty big square, but Nada has hit two, hit two big sixes and he's gone again. And I mean, goes again, six. and this is coming towards us in the commentary box. It's another six where it took a while to find the ball or get a new one, but the same result when the new ball came out. Yeah, well, we just said you probably don't want to be flighting it, and Aaron's probably just given that one a little bit too much, a little bit, you know, in the form that Nada is in. He found that pretty easy just to get underneath that one and dispatch it over long on. And that would look lovely on the online stream if you're watching. I mean, trying to change the angle now around the wicket to the right-handed Noda. Just a good length ball, hit away, cut away on the offside towards the back, backwards point region, and they come back for two. That's the problem when you've got so much protection on the leg side is that you've got to leave a gap open on the offside. And uh, Aaron would have been hoping to spin that one back in to Nada to cramp him up, but bowling from around the wicket, maybe it's a little bit more difficult so Nada can free his arms and hit that gap behind point. I mean, and again, that's a full length ball, almost Yorker length, and Nada just digs it out towards long off and come through for a single. Yeah, Cambridge boys are very quiet now. Yeah. Uh, I think those sixes, those three sixes from Nada have completely taken the, what little energy they had. It's deflated them. I mean, again, that's a good ball and a good length and respectfully played back to him. But e even when Oxford first came out to bat, you sensed that they were really up for it and thought they had a we're in with a, a real shout of a winning the game. Obviously, at 101 for seven, what Cambridge were, they would fancy it, but they clearly clearly knew that that was not enough on this wicket because from the first boundary that was struck, they were whooping and cheering in the pavilion a lot louder than we heard any of the Cambridge boys in the opening innings. Oh, yeah, and there's nothing worse than being on the other side of that. There's apps. I've lost enough varsity games in my time that you know when you're standing out there in the field and you have that you have that whooping and cheering, it's, uh, it's pretty pretty disheartening. So uh, it's, not, it's not fun at the minute. Um, which is why when, when, when you're in the ascendancy, you've got you've to cash in, as the, as the Oxford boys now are doing. Yep, Jan cross Samirski into bowl now, just back of a length, hit away. A bit short, that. Towards in splitting long on and deep with wicket, or the sweeper on the leg side, and they come back for, for two. It's 50 for Tom Noddett. Excellent innings, match-winning knock. Looks, I think it's 51 off 27. I'll have that confirmed now in a second, but... Uh, yeah, a bit short from Cross Samirski and not it didn't get all of it, but it gets enough of it on the pull shot to hit it over mid wicket. And um, just and just two. comparing the strike rates, Nathan, not a if we is fifty one of twenty seven, that looks to be what it is, up to a, around about hundred and ninety as Cross Samirski comes in again and they run through for what looks to be a single. Mm, that's on. That's wow. Well, that's that, that strike rate is is beyond pretty much anything we saw for Cambridge. One hundred percent. And Tom Tom's a big lad and he was always looks to come hard at it. That's that's, that's, that's his game. Um, he likes he likes to hit the ball very hard, and he hits it cleanly. Um, to be fair to him, he's you know he's quite talented. Um, but I think it just goes to show that on this pitch, when the ball is pitched up, it it is pretty true, and you can hit through the line. It's just a quest question of can the bowlers hit their lengths and not give them that length to hit through. And uh, to be honest, even when Cambridge haven't given him and they've and they've have bowled into the pitch a little bit more, he's been able to adjust and and take his ones and take his twos. Whereas I think in the first six, Cambridge probably just faced too many dot balls. Yeah, cross Samuski there. Just back of a length again and played into the leg side for uh, another couple by the looks of things as Tom Nutter facing again. In comes Cross Samuski now right up over the wicket. Just 
Good length ball, and that's slashed away for four over cover. That's a lovely shot. That is a man who is is in good touch. That happens when you're 50 not out. We keep talking about the length. Jan's hit his length there. Back of a length, hitting the top of the stumps, but not as backed away to create some room and just flayed it away over the offside. Again, probably hasn't got all of it, but he's a strong man, and I imagine he's got quite a good bat in his hands as well. So, uh, you know, plenty on it to clear extra cover and, and go away to the fence. Yeah, this is a match that is becoming increasingly, increasingly more likely that Oxford are going to take it. We've known sure. it for a while. Ooh. Cross Samurski, just good length ball, and Noda hits it up in the air, and it's going to bounce away from the fielder down there at long off and not go to the rope, so they that's come back for a couple. Bizarre. That went a long way up, landed just inside the rope, and it's completely plugged. And the fielder is just sort of halfway house, isn't he, between the ring and, and the edge of the rope, the boundary rope. Yeah, Nick Taylor, the skipper there, running back from mid-off to try and get 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 hold of that but like we said it was landed inside the rope so just about a yard inside the rope so he never really had a chance of of claiming that over his shoulder cross some skin again then oh and not in the mood to finish this early it's an example of how short the boundaries are down the ground that nick taylor from our angle here looks quite a way back he's probably just on the ring but he's just he's just just at mid off just yeah yeah i think it's it's a difficult one because at the end of the game you don't have that many runs to play with. So Nick's got to decide whether he's whether he's saving one and he's and he's tight there, or if he's sitting on the ring and hoping for a miscue. Um, you know we got a miscue there from Nodder, but you know he still hit it hard enough to clear the ring, albeit not not to get to the fence. We've got a a group of cricketers coming towards now. I presume these are these are your mates, Nathan, yeah, are they? So. Yeah, this is the victorious second second eleven from earlier on in the day. They've. Uh, They've got some celebratory drinks in their hands, mm. as they sh should well do. It's not often in my time that we've won, <laughs> we've won See, some varsity matches. So I think uh, I think those boys are definitely going to enjoy themselves. Seem to be the only victorious side in light blue today. We're going to hand back over to Chris Jordan now until the close, uh, whilst I gather up the the post match audio and reaction, which is increasingly looking likely to be a, a Cambridge defeat as Oxford just require twelve to win now with ten overs to go and nine wickets in hand. Yeah, thanks, Ollie. As you say, 90 for one. Uh, Oxford just needs 12 to win as Vitali has uh, switched ends, coming in left arm over the wicket, uh, across the right hand in Mohammed, and uh, it's through to the keeper. No run, Nathan. Yeah, still they're all very deflated. Um, not, not a lot of noise between deliveries at the moment, I think, you know. The Cambridge side definitely know that the game is up, but it's just a question of can we take another couple with us, or at least you know, at least try and get some nerves in that Oxford changing room. That won't That's help. That's right. Oh no, I thought it was a wide. It must have flicked a pad on the way through. Yeah, well, just uh, le left arm uh, over the wicket to right-handed batsman. There's kind of a fairly straight delivery, but uh, uh, like you say, flicked the pad on the way through to the keeper, so no wide well, I given. Thought it, I thought it flicked pad, but Omar's there. He's get Omar Muhammad. He's giving a funny look to the umpire. I don't think he. Fl I don't think he thought it flicked his pad. He, <laughs> he was asking the question of why it wasn't given a wide. There's uh, Vitali in again and bowls, and uh, he kind of maybe kept a little bit low and uh, through to hide behind the stumps. Um, Tom Nodder, 58 from 31, five fours and three sixes. Uh, with uh, good support at the other end from Mohammed, 25 from 27 with with five fours. Uh, they uh, they will obviously uh, want to try and see this home uh, together, but Vitali will have other ideas. He sprints in uh, over the wicket, the left hander, and uh, Mohammed kind of uh, plays. I'm going to be kind of saying unorthodox shot, uh, but it's cut off and uh, kind of a short mid on uh, mid off, sorry, kind of uh, kind of position, and there's no run. Yeah, he's trying to he's trying to hit that over mid wicket who's up in the ring. Jim's just dropped it a little bit short. Um and Omar's trying to hit it over mid wicket, but um just su just stuck in the pitch a little bit, making it difficult to time. And again Vitali in and this time Mohammed has got hold of it. It's in the air, but I think it's gonna land safe. Yeah, one bounce and then uh Sound like a fielding uh on the extra cover boundary. Uh, recovers the ball and I think it was just a single yeah it was just just one more run to the Oxford title wasn't that far away from San Anaiko. um I want you know again those are the types of deliveries when those are the type of balls when the game is going against you you 
you know, you just need a moment of magic. You need someone to come charging in from the rope and try and take. I'm not saying Madara should have. I don't think he had a chance of any, getting anywhere near that. But I think that's been a difference in this innings is that there's been a few of those types of balls that have landed just a yard or so away from a fielder. Um, whereas in the Oxford innings, um, Cambridge were picking out fielders almost at will. That's Shots. right, he's gone again. This time that's uh, that's cleared the boundary by a good uh, 20 metres. That's a, that's a big shot. And uh, six more to the Oxford total. And they're closing in on victory here in the Varsity T20 uh, for uh, 2021. They are, um, uh, I, th I think I'm going to be right in saying they're 98 or 99 for one here, uh, chasing 102 to win after Cambridge's first things of 101 for seven. Uh, yeah, we got 97 for one from 11. Uh, so just four runs short, five more to win, and uh, well, nine overs in which to do it, which uh, which they will do now. It's just a case. That was another uh, massive sh shot from, from Nada, wasn't it? This one over mid-off this time. He's been hitting very cleanly over the leg side, which shows he can hit it over the off side as well. That's just, that's just one of those at long off. As soon as he hits it, you just stand there and watch and admire it as it flies over your head. Absolutely. I think it's, is it Alex Moen coming in no, again? No, this is Jan again. Oh, this oh, is Jan Krosomirski. Jan, Jan, yeah. uh, Jan Krosomirski. Uh, a bit quicker than Moen. And uh, Mohammed is on strike. They know that a six wins it. Do they, does that come into your head when you're in this kind of position and you're definitely going to win? Or Depends on the player. I suspect with Omar, maybe not. Whereas Tom Nodda is definitely trying to absolutely smash every <laughs> delivery. He wants to win it in style. I think Omar is happy yeah. to hit a single and let him do it, to be honest. And that certainly looks like it from that delivery. A bit short of a length. And uh, uh, Omar Mohamed just uh, making no uh, effort to uh, play an attacking shot. Just uh, padding it away into the offside and, uh, and standing there waiting for the next one. Yeah, you could see there he's just trying to open the face and just try and get it from outside off into that gap at cover. Um, to get his mate on strike. As Krosomirski comes in again to bowl, right arm over pretty quick and <laughs> playing a miss. Maybe he, is <laughs> maybe he is trying to hit a six to win it. He <laughs> has a walk down the track and tries to smash it over mid on, um, but comes up empty. I think Jan just beat him for pace a little bit there. Um, who knows? Maybe he is trying to be the hero and smash it into the side screen to win the game. It's 18 minutes to seven here on Cambridge 105 Radio. Uh, Johnny Five with the Urban Baseline will be here just after seven o'clock. Uh, we'll stay with the with this match to, the con to its conclusion, of course. Uh, as Krosomirski comes into bowl, he's beaten the bat this time, uh, taken by Hyde behind the stumps. Yeah, he's not happy. He's. Uh, <laughs> I can hear him from here giving out. He is. <laughs> to be fair, he is liable to a bit of a moan and a bit of a word at the bats. And, um, but it's great to see even when the, the the game is gone that the bowler still really wants that wicket. Like, oh, yeah. Even He's though it's not going to impact the outcome of the match. I can guarantee you if he does get a wicket here, he, there will be a big response. <laughs> <laughs> he loves it. Krasinski in bowls again. Shot. And uh, That's it. Mohammed has hit it over the top. And it's over the top of the sight screen and uh, out to the well over the boundary of course and that is uh, the six that Oxford University needed to win this varsity T20 here at Fenners uh, they've won it by nine wickets with eight overs to spare and we'll bring Julian Clover back in uh, uh, shortly while we uh, uh, while we uh, take advantage of this uh, this last 15 minutes up to up to the news to uh, just have a have a quick chat back over the game. Uh, Tom Nodder finishing, uh, I believe, 64 not out. We'll just uh, wait for our scorecards to update. And um, yeah, 64 not out from 32 balls with five fours and four sixes. Uh, with Mohammed 32 not out from 37 balls uh, with five fours and that one six there at the end to finish. Uh, the only other batsman, Hargrave, who went second ball, uh, caught by Huion. Uh, from the bowling of Sananaika. At that stage, it looked like Cambridge might uh, be able to uh, uh, have a good start and put the squeeze on, but uh, after the first two overs, uh, Nodder and Mohammed really uh, started to uh, uh, play some attacking shots, uh, score quite freely and uh, hit some big, uh, well, hit four big sixes, Nodder, uh, as, well as, uh, as well as some very well-struck boundaries. And uh, they, uh, and Nodder and Mohammed just uh, did the job uh, with the bat, but it was uh, it was the bowling and fielding that set that up, Nathan. Yeah, 100%. Oxford were very 
very organized in their first innings. They had a very, very simple plans. Um, try and force Cambridge. They knew Cambridge would look to come hard at them, but try and bowl a length that made it difficult to, to get underneath the ball and hit it over the top. Cambridge struggled that a little bit and lost two wickets in the power play and then straight away you're on the back foot and then once the pressure builds, especially in a varsity game, dot balls start to build and you know when you face as many dot balls as Cambridge did in the first six, you're always chasing the game. And Cambridge were. Um, they looked a little bit like in the in the middle overs there, especially when Aaron Amin and Joe Van Dyerwald were in there. When they looked to take on the spinners a little bit more, they looked like they might look to push things a bit and get get a respectable score. But once those two went, it was it was always going to be difficult. And then maybe in the second innings, I think Cambridge m might be looking at maybe they probably bowled a little bit full at times, um, making it easier for the likes of Nada to hit through it and you know hit the boundaries that he did. Albeit he still played some very good shots and. You know, the types of deliveries that Cambridge were struggling to get away in the first innings, he was punishing. The one thing which was very noticeable between the two innings was the amount of boundaries that Oxford were were able to, to score. And as you say, Cambridge had a go, but they just couldn't get them out. It's frustrating because that's been a big focus for us this year with our new coach. He's come in and maybe because historically we've, you know, we've had quite a few tidy looking players who shape up well, but maybe not, you know, when push comes to shove, don't necessarily have that boundary option almost, at, you know, in uh, in the locker whenever they want it. Uh, whereas someone like Nada today definitely does. And that's something we've been working on. We've been saying, right, well, we're going to hit the ball hard, look to hit gaps and, you know, back yourself to go over the top when you get your delivery. If you if you miss time and you get out, so be it. There's enough guys in the shed who can do that. You know, someone like Harry Huyong, his dismissal, trying to go over the top, caught mid off. You know, that's the type of dismissal you can kind of say, look, on another day he, he gets a hold of that, it's over the top, he's got his boundary, and, you know, that gives him a lot of confidence and he can kick on. But um, I think noticeable thing is boundaries, but, you know, bound not hitting boundaries comes from pressure, and pressure comes from dot balls. And Cambridge faced, I think, too many dot balls in the first six, and it's very difficult when you're facing dot balls to then just say, oh, we're going to fix it with, with boundaries, because yeah. that's, that's the hardest thing to do. And the easiest thing is to get off strike and try and build a little bit, which um, we didn't do. Yeah, I thought the, the the power plays were were interesting. You kind of feel that sometimes any power play can can go either way, and one one side can really get get control of that period of play. One hundred percent. If you go two down in the power play, you're going to struggle, and that's what happened. And again, the types of dismissals where guys are going after it and they back themselves and it just doesn't come off. You can kind of those are the dismissals you can forgive. But when there's two or three of them in the power play, and you are you're going to be behind behind the eight ball, and you've got to have a plan for coming out of that. And I suspect that. If the plan would have been there maybe for Cambridge in the first six, but the execution of it to, to kind of to turn, turn the game around and maybe counter-attack a bit, it didn't come off. And credit to uh, certainly the uh, the two Oxford opening bowlers, uh, Foster opening with a spinner. Uh, he did really well with his first couple of overs and finished one for 21. And then Ben Fisher, two for 10 from his four with, with a maiden. And That's, so that those are some incredible figures. First seam bowler bowling in the power play with only two up. Those are some pretty good figures. Two for ten. That, that's that's incredible. Yeah, that's impressive stuff. And uh, uh, Cambridge, in reply, just to uh, just to uh, finish my uh, scorecard for the bowling figures: uh, Senanaka two overs, one for sixteen; Vitali three overs, none for twenty; Amin uh, none for thirty-four; Moeen just the one over, none for fourteen; and Krosominski bowling at the end there. Uh, one ball short of three overs, uh, none for 19. I'm just looking at the uh, the chart that Ollie brought up earlier of the the last five uh, T20 meetings, and it's it seems to be alternate alternately winning. But um, would you would you say that over time, Nathan, that the the sides are are actually actually pretty evenly matched? T20 is very diff. It's difficult to say because uh, it is quite a different format, and in T20 you just need one guy to have his performance of the year, and you win the game. Um, you know, not not a did that today. Cambridge didn't have somebody doing that in their first innings. Whereas in the longer formats, such as fifty overs and then the multi-day games, which we will get in July, you know, the better team will have more opportunities to show their superiority. So that, that, it doesn't surprise me as a as a result that every year the T Twenty kind of fluctuates from, right. from from team to team. Whereas generally, the better team will win the fifty overs and and the four day. For example, I think the year the year I played in the four day. Um, 2019, I think we won, the Blues won the T20, but then proceeded to lose the, the, the 50 overs in the four day, and we definitely were not the better team that year. So on the positive side, even though uh, the, the men's side we've just witnessed and the, 
uh, women's side beforehand, even though they both lost their T20s. That doesn't mean to say that it's going to be a bad rest of season for the other varsity matches. By, by all means not. And I'm sure Joy, when she was here, was probably too diplom diplomatic to say that, realistically. Well, you can say it. That's I think, fine. I, I, think, I think the Cambridge women is stronger. That's so it is stronger. I think it's tough to say with the men because Oxford have a few injuries and guys who have maybe haven't played as much and I don't think they've necessarily played as much league cricket as we have. Um, but I would think slightly on paper the men's side is also stronger. Um, so no, I don't think there's necessarily, this isn't a precedent for the rest of the year and the, the next two varsity matches matches I think um, you know it's it's a bit of a cliche but they will take learnings from this um, and, and in, like I said in, in 2020 it is a little bit a case of you know you just need two or three really good performances whereas in the longer format this tends to be the better side will will come out on top. Now Ollie has uh, disappeared over the other side uh, of the ground I think he's trying to see if he can uh, pull in an interview with uh, one or more people would they be would they be having a presentation over that far side there's no PA system here so it's sort of difficult to tell as to what uh, exactly is uh, yeah, might is, is happening. I know they do one after the four day game I'm not sure about the 2020. Um, I'm not quite sure because we're not really supposed to be encouraging congregations of people at the no, moment, that's are the we? Thing. So. And obviously, as we've been pointing out, there's no uh, been no uh, meeting earlier on. Um, yeah, we, we have got something to go through in a second, I think, just to confirm it. Uh, the last T20, Cambridge 101 for 7 from their 20 overs, Oxford in reply 103 for 1 from 11.5 okay, overs by uh, 9 wickets. Let's go across then, I think, to uh, Ollie. Who have you got with you, Ollie? No, not, not oh, not yet, I'm told. I was getting uh, getting a little bit carried away. Uh, Nathan, those uh, upcoming uh, longer format games. When can we? Uh, uh, when when are they going to be taking place? And and where are they? Are they Lords? So the men's are at Lords. Yes, um, they're Sunday week. I believe that's the twenty third. Um, I might be wrong there. So yeah, that's pretty soon. I, I'm not sure about Oxford's schedule, but I know Cambridge have one game before that. Um, so I, I actually suspect the side will be pretty similar. Um, they'll because they'll give guys another go. Um, like as at this level that, uh, that are uh, considered four-day specialists and uh, haven't played today? Or probably it, probably not, just the, no. The best cricketers are the, in the team for all Gen formats? Generally, the best cricketers are in, are, are in, are in the side regardless, I think. Um, there's one or two guys who obviously will back themselves um, to try and get into, get into a bit of nick and try to force their way in. It might be a bit difficult. Like I say, there's only one game between now and Lords, um, so it might be a bit difficult to do that. But as the season goes on, you know, the four-day game isn't until the first week of July, so there's plenty of cricket between now and then for, for other players to maybe get a go and try and force their way into the side. Just waiting to get uh, a signal to uh, to find out whether uh, Ollie will be ready to uh, speak to us. Uh, in the meantime, there was a little baby tractor uh, which pulled uh, some covers on just to uh, uh, the edge of the square, and now some covers are being laid uh, across there. And some uh, uh, gentlemen to the left of us are uh, uh, collapsing a um, um, a gazebo type structure, which has been housing some uh, some more video, which I think the university. Uh, has has been take, taking Nathan. How how many sort of pictures do they normally prepare here? Oh, cool. plenty. I mean, <laughs> absolutely loads. At least I, I'm trying to see how many I can see. I can I see think at least possibly eight. three. Are there, oh, there, no, there's there a lot more, more than that. More, oh, there's another one over there, of course. Yes. So there's there's two cut at the moment. That we played on a different one on Wednesday, I believe. And then there's there's actually on the far side on the left hand side as we see it, there's a brown strip covering a cut a cut a cut grass pitch from. Um, that was actually going to originally going to be the pitch for today, um, but I think given the weather this week, that was underwater. So I think that that plan changed. Um, yeah, very, I, I very know quickly. that Will was referring to a, a, a six-day pitch a little bit uh, a little bit earlier on. Now I'm getting a um, a sign from Dom, which seems to suggest that uh, Ollie is ready for us. So um, Ollie, who have you got with you? Yeah, I've got wicketkeeper Ed Hyde with me. Ed, unfortunate uh, loss this afternoon against Oxford. Just give us your thoughts immediately from the match. Yeah, a bit gutted about that. Um, um, fair play to fair play to Oxford and, and Tom Nodder there. Um, really good display of batting and hitting, um, but we didn't adjust well enough with the bat early on. It was a low and slow pitch, and a lot of our batsmen aren't big hitters are going to clear the ropes. So I think we should have realised a lot sooner that it was going to be a case of running ones and twos real real hard, and and getting a bit more 360 of our shots behind square dabs scoops like we saw at the end from Sam Turner um, so yeah a really disappointing afternoon there What did you make of the week because it's had obviously a couple of games on it before yours the women's and the reserve game this morning and in fact a few more over the past few days as well what did you make of 
off the surface? Um, wasn't I wasn't surprised to be honest, given the amount of cricket it's had on it, and we've and we've we've experienced similar wickets to that over the past couple of months playing here. Um, so I think we could we just need to be a bit sort of a bit sharper. I think with with, with uh, assessing that wicket, um, and maybe we'd have we could we would have added 20, 20 or so runs. But hats off to Oxford, they're much stronger on the day here. Um, yeah. What were the, the batsmen coming back out from being in the middle, the, the guys getting out, coming back in, in in that first innings? I think after the power play you were 10 for 2. What were those guys saying to you when you, when you were just ready to go out? They were saying that it was really, they, they were finding it really difficult. Um, it's difficult to get underneath the ball, despite what we just, we just <laughs> seen there. Um, and yeah, and, just, and the, the Oxford guys are bowling pretty pretty tight tight lines and lengths. So um, yeah, we weren't expect we soon realised we weren't going to be setting a massive score. Um, but I still felt we just went we went too long trying to trying to biff it and 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 things like that. When maybe we would be better inclined to, to be a bit sort of wiser and and use our sort of sweeps and reverse sweeps and and run a bit harder. But that's in hindsight. Um, if you catch a few like Tom Nodder did there with a short boundary, then it looks great and it comes off. So it's, dif it's difficult to assess after the match. Um, but I think that what I've just talked about there, we can uh, take forward in, in, in the years to come if we're playing here at Fenners. And the parks and Oxford's very similar wicket as well. So uh, it's not dissimilar uh, to this. And we're always going to, the, the, the Blues always play last as well. So we're going to be playing. Yeah. Um, so something to take forward and next year. And you've got nine days now until the, the match at Lords, obviously not, in, not a clue what that wicket will be like yet, but it's such a quick turnaround. How do you try and get the boys back up again, ready for that big fixture at Lords? Um, I don't think it'll be an issue. Um, I think, if anything, it'll probably be a bit of extra motivation getting absolutely crushed today. Um, and um, a lot of us, well, a few of us in this team have been here before, being crushed in the 2020 um, in close proximity to the Lords game, um, so we sort of know. Well, we've we've experienced it before, and um, we're not phased by it, really. Uh, we use it as extra motivation, and it's a, it's a big week ahead in terms of practicing and um, and sort of uh, assessing their players. We've seen them play now. We know who we're going to be playing against, largely. So um, yeah, looking forward to it. And just lastly, is the today's game irrelevant in a sense because walking out of Lords is such a different environment to this anyway. I think so once you get once you get to Lords and, and you feel that sense of occasion <laughs> you know what you've done beforehand you know quickly flies flies out the window. There's there's always that sort of sense are oh, they beat us they've beat us before so I think it does have a bit of relevance but yeah I think the occasion at Lords does does take over and it does probably cancel out some of the some of the mental advantage they've got from from today. Ed, commiserations and go well in nine days' time. Cheers, Ollie. Thank you. Disappointment there from uh, Ed Hine uh, speaking to uh, Ollie Slack. Many thanks to uh, all of our team here today, to Chris Jordan, also to Will Dobson, uh, to Joy Lindsay and uh, Lizney rather, and uh, Nathan Johns as well. Uh, Cambridge University, 101 for seven. Uh, sadly beaten by Oxford University, 103 for one. Urban Baseline is coming up after the news at seven o'clock. I suppose cricket in the town, yeah, I think you need to go back to, to Parker's piece. What an extraordinary...